Hello. Welcome to Nat 9. Yeah. I mean, weirdly, that is exactly <laughs> what I expected you to do. I'm. <laughs> Welcome to Nat 19. Today is a uh, special game that is going to be something that is, I've made the terrible decision of deciding this, is canon to the events of Somnus Domino. <laughs> oh, yes! Let's go! Yes! Uh, we have recently, a lot of this was said before stream, but now that we are recording, uh, we released the Crystal Tiefling, something I've been working on for a long while with uh, an artist who goes by Kem. Uh, they are Aethermancy on Twitter, if you'd like to look them up. They did the background art, not the not the character faces you're seeing here, but they did the background art you see, as well as much of the uh, insert art for the Crystal Tiefling book, which contains um, a special new kind of Tiefling, ten sub races, uh, several subclasses, feats, uh, character information and such, origins and the like. It is 33 pages of content, and if you'd like to check it out, it's up on my drive through RPG. And since we don't have Alejandro or Hayden today, we thought that we would run a really quick slapdash, quickly put together, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, light-hearted, uh, mess-around Crystal Tiefling one-shot. And the people who are here for that, uh, going down the list, uh, give a brief introduction, maybe with slightly more context than the previous introductions. <laughs> um, uh, Bread. Hi, I'm Fred Bredersen. <laughs> I am a voice actor, and I play D&D on here on Saturdays and Thursdays, and I'm part of Chaos Crew, which is on Wednesdays. Why do we... Why do, like, you and I have this weird sense of fear for a thing we've been doing for five years? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm like, it feels like I'm DMing for the first time for some reason, and I have no I idea know. why. I don't know how to play <laughs> D&D. This is my first time as far as I'm concerned emotionally, <laughs> but it's going to be fine. Um, New characters, who dis? Been playing exactly. for 15 years, been DMing the show for five years. I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I can run this tiefling thing. Heckin. I mean, it's been the first time in a year that I've played a new character, so I'm, I'm just a little camera shy. I'm going to go unmute. Next person, go. Eric. Hi, I'm Eric VA. I do voice acting things as well. I also play D&D on here. Uh, and I play uh, with the cool kids on Tuesday streams that we do. Uh, some video games. And uh, yeah, I edit highlights as well for Princess of the Apocalypse. Yeah, yes he does. Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm kind of everywhere. Uh, you know me from being cute as fuck. Um, I do voiceover. <laughs> you see me here. You see me on Thursday. It doesn't matter which one. You see me on Monday and sometimes on Tuesday and Wednesday. And if you're not seeing me on Tuesday, you might be seeing me on Tuesday, but somewhere else. Uh, I am adorable. Hi, nice to meet you. You're the one <laughs> from Cute. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> Hi, I'm name's Cookie Chiona. I am a voice actress. I am also a VTuber. I shitpost a lot on Twitter. I only go here sometimes, and that's mostly every other Thursday, but I think they're plotting to kidnap me. Um, <laughs> I think they're plotting to kidnap me, which is why I'm here, because normally I'm not here. Only <laughs> twice. It's true. Join us! Now we know that you exist on Saturdays. Oh. Join us! <laughs> Join us! This does not bode well for you. Oh no. <laughs> uh, Cody. Hello, I am Summoner Blue, otherwise known as Cody. Uh, I am the other half of the cool kids, stay cool. Um, and uh, I, I am on here uh, D and DN all the time, three days a week, two days a week. Uh, <laughs> I'm in three different games, two days a week. And uh, I do my own stuff over on uh, Summoner's Network, which uh, a couple of these boys are also a part of. And for those who, um, and for those who don't know the channel normally, uh, I'm Logan Laidlaw. I'll be DMing today. I normally DM one of the Thursday games, and I always DM the Saturday game. I'm the creative director of the channel. Uh, I manage all the stuff. I, uh, heckin' am a professional voice actor and TTRPG content creator, as you can tell by the thing that we are celebrating the release of today. Oh. And I am a full-time ball of high-functioning nervous energy that somehow has tricked people into thinking they have any idea what they're doing at any given time. Oh, you're but, also from Cute. I... sometimes. You fool, we're all from Cute! I'm sometimes. 
I sometimes crash wherever I, I please on this channel, but I am the only mm -hmm. one of us that does not show up between Monday and Wednesday. Except for oh. whenever I choose to. Except when you do. <laughs> because nobody, <laughs> nobody stopped me yet. Really I the 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 with me. We need to play critically acclaimed MMORPG Fall Fest Force. I know, I want to. We're finally on the right <laughs> server. A free trial up to level 60, including the award winning comments award expansion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alrighty. With all of that, I can. Are you guys ready to. I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll give one last note to those who may have just joined. If you'd like to join into the raffle, you do need to be a sub to the channel. We are giving away ten copies of the Crystal Tiefling today. Um, you do need to be a sub of the channel, and you do not need to put the number for how many tickets you're putting in afterwards. It is one per person. Um, you do have to be here at the end of the stream to claim it. So if you enter and you do not respond to our message, if we pick you, we will pick somebody else. Hmm. All right. Not we'll see you guys. Not and no trading. <laughs> if you already have, if you already have the thing, if you already have the crystal tiefling thing, no trading. Yeah. Don't work that way. <laughs> yeah. If they want to. Unless it does. Don't oh, work that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Buy and also. Yeah. <laughs> because we'll know. And also, don't download the PDF and send the file to all your friends, because we'll know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be sorry if you mess with us. I'll sell Alrighty. them on the deep web. You can buy it. <laughs> buy it for your mom. Buy it for your dog. Buy it for your book. Book a vacation for your book. <laughs> I think we're gonna be problems. I'm sorry, Logan. I'll try to calm down. No, no. Today is going to be a lot of really high energy, tongue in cheek stupidity. Uh, it's what I'm here for. I mm. have intentionally left the opening chunks of this relatively blank. Because I kind of want to see what happens. You guys are all going to have another platform here in a sec to, to talk a bit more. Um, but that that said... Whoop-yow! I changed the scene. Oh, oh sweet. Okay, I couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. You guys aren't allowed to look at chat. I changed the scene. Okay. So, I'm not going to be showing the art big on screen, but everybody can see everybody's art there in the uh, in the corner. So, 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 brief introduction for those who know the setting and for those who do not and need to know what we're doing. This takes place in the year 376 AD. In August, our setting uses real world months. Don't ask where they got the names. Just Julius, fantasy Julius Caesar definitely existed. Don't worry about it. <laughs> On an August Friday, this takes place, just for everyone's, uh, just for trivia's sake, 20 years before the main campaign. Miriam's five. It's true, he's very young, he's a tiny. Fenris <laughs> is younger. It takes place, <laughs> this... This one place will be taking... One place, this one shot. I'm already at, in a place that's not good. <laughs> this one shot will be taking place in the town of Sellisfield in Sermon Way, a place that has been mentioned several times in the campaign. The southernmost Retian country in Somnus Domina. Sellis Field sits at the center of a peninsula, reaching to the interior of Retia's largest lake, the massive sea-like Hunter Basin. In this modest town of 500 residents are a humble group of individuals who will be played by these wonderful people that you, you see surrounding me at the table, that you can definitely see, that we're definitely all around, and we're not just at our computers like nerds, who blend in in everyday society, living their lives calmly and quietly. Gathered together by an imprisoned elemental being named Vilthadon, these five crystal tieflings were charged with protecting an underground structure, the Crystal Sanctuary, which, at its core, possesses a special powerful uh, nexus of magical energy called the Terminus Hadron, which prevents the surrounding planar membrane around Celis Field from weakening, as the location does have a... is a point where the planes... Do not coalesce, but the planar boundaries are weaker than they would be otherwise. Granted fantastic power in the form of these subclasses and whatnot, these crystal tieflings are known to the local townsfolk as the Crystal Hunters, and they defended against Vilthadon's enemy, the eldritch being known as Hygax. To those in chat that recognize what we're doing before we get to it, congrats. I'm proud of you. <laughs> which itself is attempting to destroy the Terminus Hadron and escape its prison in the plane of negative energy. This is an in-media-res sort of one-shot, 
We are running this with the assumption that there is a history here. These people have been at this for a while. Might be a year, might be multiple years. Who's to say? That said, I'd like real quick, I hope you're all prepared for this, I'm going to go down the list, and I'd like you each to tell us whatever you feel is appropriate to tell us about your characters today. Just to reiterate to the people that are watching at home, this is a uh, game where everybody is playing a crystal tiefling, but they have the guise of regular humans, disguised as humans uh, in the city. I don't know what you're talking about, chat. Um, disguised as humans within the city until trouble comes knocking. Why don't we start with, uh, tell us whatever you feel is appropriate about your character, Anna. Hello? Hi. My name is Constance Colabri. I wasn't prepared. I am a... Huh? I wasn't prepared. You weren't prepared? <laughs> I was not. No, you're never prepared. You're not supposed to be prepared for a rogue. We're supposed to sneak up on you and do that thing we do where we do the thing where we kill you. Or we take your stuff. I like apples. They're very, very good. I think they're the best fruit. I almost dropped mine. This is mine. You can't have it. <laughs> what kind of crystal tiefling are you? I am a special jasper tiefling. Most of them are like blue or yellow, but I'm pink. And pink is very pretty. Like me, because I'm very pretty. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> There's the apple. I was waiting for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eric, tell, really us, tell us a bit about your character. Oh, hi. Well, I'm uh, I'm Callus Vesper. Um, I'm a Jetstone Tiefling cleric. Uh, I I do work in the town's temple, healing people and trying to you know use the powers of uh, dark and light to help people as best I can in the town, and. Uh, yeah, I don't really, I don't really like to be around other people that much. Alrighty. Uh, Cody, could you tell us a bit about your character? Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Clifton Yost. Uh, I am, uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm, uh, I am a, uh, Kyanite tiefling, although I don't say that often to people because I'm a human right now. Um, I, uh, I usually just go around with my sword trying to help people where I can if there's any, any sort of ne'er-do-wells around. Uh, I get in trouble with the guards sometimes for uh, going and helping them, though. <laughs> Alrighty. Bread, why don't you tell us a bit about your character? Hi, my name is Lorelei. Um, I am a sodalite tiefling, and I just love people. I just love getting to know everyone. I'm a warlock. Um... Vilfadon is actually my patron, which is pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, I just, people, man. I have light purple pastel hair, these antlers that are missed, like a little uneven, but I don't think if you look at it very hard, it's not that, well, people don't see them, so it's fine. And people, so cool. I'm really scared. To know where you landed on this. <laughs> so, I open this can of worms carefully. Aaron, why don't you tell us a bit about your boy? Ignatius Lescott. It's not what I thought it was going to be. All right. <laughs> I chop wood. It's a little bit what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Which explains my awesome rockin' bod. Oh my Did God. you mix up? <laughs> I sell great. what I chop. You're doing great. Keep going. That's all I do. I chop wood. <laughs> you chop how, do you wood. Chop how do you chop it? With an axe. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. I'm already loving this. Yep. <laughs> the world will just have to figure out through the minor bits of trivia that I put on Twitter what I thought this was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Goodness, goodness, goodness. We're all so cute. It's true. Y'all are a bunch of adorable little, little muffins. Little crystal, multicolored rainbow muffins. So, as I said, the day that we're starting in, it is a, uh, it is an August Friday. It is 
relatively warm where you are in the southern reaches of Somnus Domina. Uh, the weather is where you are. Pretty, pretty warm this time of year. Uh, you live in an area that, um, it is mostly a trades-based town. Uh, there's a lot of hunters, gatherers, a lot of fishermen. There is, you, uh, this town that you are in is on the docks, or on the water, and there is a prominent fishing trade that goes on between, not only, um, between you guys and those who come to visit, but also... Uh, between you guys and various other towns and villages on the coast of the uh, of the Hunder Basin that also trade by water. Uh, you guys, I would like to know: Do you, do you, uh, any of you guys? It's about mid afternoon, fairly clear day. The sky is uh, not a cloud in sight. Is there anything that you guys would want me to know that you guys would be doing at this time of day? Anything in particular that uh, the group, in their human guises, might be at this time doing. Chopping wood. <laughs> I'm watching him chop wood while I eat my apples. Um, You're doing a good job. I'm at the temple, probably. Helping Healing people, up. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Depends on who's around. <laughs> we didn't cover it in the, uh, in the preamble or anything, but the temple that you would serve at would most likely be a temple to... Uh, the Idolan Emir, who is uh, worshipped more heavily in this area, given that this is a place that is more resplendent in terms of natural bounty than other things. Uh, Emir would be the person you would hear the most about. Most fishermen would pray to them, because Emir is considered to be the source of good health and bounty within nature. So the temple you're at would likely have a very large, uh, twisting Trent and Minotaur-like um, statue to Emir. As you guys are doing what you do, ex with the exception of those who are chopping wood, because you guys would be on the outskirts, likely in the forest, those of you who are in town, which uh, I presume that um, Lorelei and Callus, so you two are together? Uh, sure. Sure. Is that why I, I took it to be that, because you guys kind of answered together? Uh, Clifton, Clifton Yost. I want to say your name as many times as it takes. Uh, <laughs> where are you currently? Uh, I am I am busy stalking guards uh, while they're on their patrols, uh, pretending that I'm on patrol with them. Alrighty. <laughs> and this is something that you make a habit of, yes, whenever guards yes. are on patrol. So could you explain sometimes to they me? Get, sometimes they get upset with me and I have to leave. Could you explain to me what your general approach is to stalking guards? So whenever they're on patrol and they're going about their business, <laughs> do you try to like get right up in their business and try to blend in with them? Or do you just kind of like hang back in behind them and act like you're just like a rear guard to whatever patrols they're on? At first, I was like really like in their face about it, but then they kept telling me to go home. So I learned uh, that if I stay behind them, then I last longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> cool. As you guys are going about your days, uh, we'll say that you spend the afternoon stalking guards, chopping wood, watching people chop wood, tending to those at the temple. Um, you guys would become aware, those of you that are near the water, which I would say would be, uh, Callus, Clifton, and Lorelei, you would be the first ones to become aware of it. Uh, could you all just right out the gate, roll me perception checks. And you know what, Ignatius? You have the ability to see a long as heck way, yeah. uh, given what you Lord. are. Could you oh. go ahead and could you also roll me a perception check? Okay. First roll of the game, guys. Uh, oh. Too busy with my wood. <laughs> am I, am I also Man, wrong? I love chopping wood. Yes, yes, you too, Clifton. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, Callus? <laughs> I, I can't know. believe you met one. <laughs> <laughs> He's really busy with his wood, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so in that case, uh, Clifton and Callus, you guys would get the sense of... Clifton, uh, alternate way to do this, since you're with the guards. Could you also roll me, um, roll me an investigation check? Just to, assuming that you're paying some mind to what the guards are talking about and doing, please... <laughs> go Let's <ahead> and... go! <laughs> this isn't going well. This, <laughs> this is today. This is what today is. Yep. This is not going well. There are no threats behind us. 
continuing to go forward. (laughs) In that case, uh, Callus, you would be the first one to become aware of it. Um, The temple that you're currently at is uh, slightly elevated uh, above the surrounding areas of the town, giving it a view both outside of the town uh, to the fields and forests that dot the distance uh, heading out of it across the peninsula, but also giving you a view down to the harbor and to the, the lake, the glistening blue, uh, relatively calm lake that sits at the base of the town. Uh, between duties, between helping people, doing whatever you have to do at the temple, uh, paying respects, doing your daily rituals, uh, you would step out, and as you take a moment to catch your breath, you see an odd sight. As I'd stated previously, the day is clear. There is not a cloud in the sky, not a sign of a storm coming, Nothing seems to be... Nothing would indicate that the thing that you're about to see would happen. You notice what looks to be this localized, well, like, spring of mist seems to begin appearing from a particular spot out in the bay, out in the, the, the lake, about 200 feet out. Just this spot seems to begin funneling mist that become, starts coming up from underneath the lake. Oh god, we're going to Honokuni. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This curious sight uh, is a bit odd. You start to notice the water becomes more turbulent around there. You see, as you look and you, at first, don't make anything of it. As you see it, you are just taken aback a bit, wondering if it's just a strange natural occurrence. You see a fishing boat that goes out and goes past it seems to be uprooted as if something from underneath gets it. It goes into this wall of fog, and two things happens. You can still see the sail of this boat up above the wall, and as it proceeds out, you see it gets pushed up as if lifted a bit above the water within once it's kind of obscured, and then you see its sails and the mast of it catch on fire before it is cast to the side and it capsizes. As this fog continues to spread outwards. Uh, Lorelai, I'm gonna rush back in to to get Lorelai. <laughs> I'm like deeply engrossed in conversation, like about someone and how they met their husband. <laughs> <laughs> Is this when you meet them? Oh no, not yet. Okay. You just see them talking like, to this elderly gnome. Like, yes, it would have been, uh, what was it, 80, 90 years prior? How did I meet them? I believe it was through one of my cousin's cousin's families. And you just, you see this elderly gnome <laughs> going on at length, trying to recount a family tree as you, as Lorelai is oh. speaking to them, seemingly enamored by the innocuous details of their, uh, of their genealogical roots. Um... But you see them. It's like slides up behind Lorelai and like tugs at her sleeve. Uh, Lorelai. So your uh, cousin, cousin's uh, friend's party, uh, right? Uh, oh, one moment. What's up, Callus? Uh, can, can I see you outside for a second? It's oh, uh, um, important. Sure. Um, you take a laugh around Betsy. I'll be right back. <laughs> and uh, I'll, did, yeah. I'll go with Callus. That's yeah, me, Betsy the gnome. <laughs> <laughs> As you walk away, they continue to talk. This elderly, white-haired gnome, uh, gnomish woman. Um, just continuing to, like... You see them counting people on their hands as if they're trying to be like, twice, three times removed. Oh, hey, what is this? <sighs> no, that's not right. on a cliffhanger? Are you kidding me? <sighs> What's up, Callus? Uh, he, like, points out to the lake. Uh, there was a... Is it still there? Yes, and it is growing. Oh. Uh, that a boat just caught on fire out there and it capsized. Um, um yeah. wow. We should tell the others. I was thinking that, yeah. Um, it might be time for us to <laughs> suit up. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, come on. It's always fun when we do. Uh, sure. Nothing will go wrong this time, I promise. No, you always say that. Hope anyway. me and John Paul are a good team. And you've got your man, religion stuff. You'll be fine. Come on. <laughs> and I'll break away. Follows her. <laughs> Alrighty. 
<laughs> yeah, your religion stops. <laughs> Just like a long sigh. <sighs> Who would you like to try to find first? I mean, I feel like we know where one of them is at least. Chopping wood. Chopping wood. Okay. <laughs> He's always chopping wood. It's a static lifestyle, but it suits me. <laughs> you guys head quickly out to the uh, the outskirts of town, moving just out to the edge of it to where the, um, the town becomes more of a forest. Some houses remain, but you eventually approach the areas surrounding an old lumber mill where Ignatius, I love that name, by the way. That is like yeah, <laughs> such a fun name. Uh, where Ignatius is, you hear the rampant, thunderous chopping of wood of a professional laying claim to his bounty in the forest. And if, after a little bit of traveling, you see him. You see both him, and you see uh, Constance. <laughs> you hear Constance. <laughs> Ever the apple eater, that one. There's no time for apples! We gotta go! I bust through the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, more wood to she chop. Had, she had just bitten into like one one apple, throwing the core of the previous one to the, like uh, like behind her. Four star lorry. Always time for apple. I can multitask. That's what I'm good at. <laughs> yeah, Two what, I guess. Two what? There's uh, Callus saw it first, so Callus should probably explain it, and she'll kind of drag it, it him was... over and push him in front. It, it, oh, it was. <laughs> It was a, a, out in the lake, there's a huge fog, and a boat went in, and it caught on fire, and it capsized, and the fog is getting bigger, and I don't know what's going on, but it seems like something we Bad. should maybe look into. Terrible! <gasps> we forgot Clifton! <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, he's always all over the place with the guards, it's impossible to track him down. Oh, right. Hmm. I mean... At least on the bright side, now you've got us two, and we can all look for him together. Or split up. That's always a great idea, right? Right, Iggy? Uh, Tis I, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, his mind was wandering like, oh, yeah, yeah, wood. yeah, <laughs> wood. Normally <laughs> <Wood. laughs> I'd be able to see him really easily, but I can't see anything past all my wood. <laughs> <laughs> you do love chopping wood. Wow. I've made quite the pile. My god. Do you oh want god. to taste like a snack after doing all that work? I have a couple here. I have gala, I have ambrosia, I have macintosh, honey crisp, barton, pale lady. There's no, no time for snacks. Oh. We gotta go. The town is in danger. This is sort of our thing. Hi, Gex. Yeah, but if I don't eat and have nutrition, how am I supposed to have the energy to save the town? The lady makes a point. You can you can eat on the way. Exactly, I can multitask. God. I turn and I tear away into the forest. Oh, <laughs> go. The town's Walk back that her. way. <laughs> Crap! I come up charging out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you all go back towards town. You're all looking to try to find Clifton, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's say, we for the first half, Ignatius. Roll me an investigation check. I'm see if you see so him before good. the others. He's gonna be fine so fast. Good. I am such a good finder. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> bow, bow, bow. All right. Oh, negative one. You guys go, and as you proceed forward, you find yourself at the top of uh, just one of the various rolling hills that defines the outskirts of this town. Looking out over it, uh, you look into the town, and you see a gathering of guards, Ignatius, um, about halfway down towards the water. They all seem to be in the town square, looking out towards a gathering as if something had happened. Uh, and you see one person sort of hanging out on the edge of them, just far enough away that they, though they're just a dot to you right now, they look like they're trying to get involved, but also trying to keep their distance, uh, keeping low to the ground. Your brain immediately goes to that you have found him. You have found Clifton. Yeah, it's like crawling sense. toward them, trying to like hear what they're saying. <laughs> okay, as you do, why don't you roll me uh, roll me a perception check, Clifton, as the others head <laughs> towards you. I yep. There you hey! Go. Hmm. 
As you proceed forward, you hear several of the guards talking. Uh, as they talk, several break off and head towards the harbor. Um, but you catch the ones that are there that are showing up and getting briefed on what's going on. Um, very briefly, you just hear fragments of, like, Whatever it is, it's boiling the ocean. Something's coming. I'm not sure what it is. You think we'll be able to handle it, or do you think we'll need them to show up? Ah, oh, they always show us up. But if they're needed, then I guess they're needed. You're talking about us? <laughs> Claire. Claire, oh, no. what? Looks what are around. you doing hiding behind the fence? Uh, they can't. They're, they're, they're about. Hi, guys! Uh, there's something going on in the harbor! Yeah, we know. Oh, you're already in the know. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sneaky. I was able to get uh, gather information. Then get your blue butt over here. Come on. Oh, all right. <laughs> As you guys gather back up, a small coin-like pendant that you all carry that connects you back to the Crystal Sanctuary, you feel a ping of arcane energy through it, which you would all know signals that you are being summoned uh, by your patron, by the one who controls you all. You are being summoned to the Crystal Sanctuary. Not forcibly, but you are being recalled uh, to the Crystal Sanctuary by Vilthadon, the one who commonly instructs you all. We get to see Vilthadon! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, should, we, should duck down, we should duck down this alley here. Hmm. Callus, remember to breathe. <laughs> Okay, okay. Just doing karate chops on his shoulders. Okay. Oh, come on, man, this is fun! This feels great. A cosmic to- a, a cosmic gala to- for your nerves? Uh... It's sweet? Sure. Don't worry, Callie, Thank this is gonna you. be fun! Yeah! Just like it always is! Yeah! Asphyxiation is the enemy of all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think- I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Oh my goodness. Take a big bite and a breath. Alrighty. You would all be aware that it is a, as simple as activating the item to return the, to the uh, Crystal Sanctuary. You would all know that uh, the Crystal Sanctuary, this is a way to return to it as long as you're within a certain range of the town. Uh, and you would also know that from the Crystal Sanctuary, uh, there is a device that can teleport you to the surrounding area, which is commonly how you end up being deployed. Uh, for the sake of brevity, would you all like to uh, go there and answer your summons? Yes. Yeah. As you do, you all rush, you duck into an alley, getting away from everyone. As you do, you take out these individual coins, each of which has a gemstone at the center that matches the heritage that you have as a crystal tiefling. Uh, it glows, each of you is bathed in a different color, representing yours, of pink, of a dark grayish light, of blue, of red, and of yellow. You are all bathed in these light colors which fade away, seem to go up into the sky slightly, but disappear before they catch the attention of anybody. And you are all teleported to one of two towers within the cavernous location that is known as the Crystal Sanctuary, which, though I've given you guys a description of it before, is a massive, dark, underground cavern. You cannot see the bottom of it. Uh, you can see the top. You can see the stone roof. You understand this place is underneath Celis Field somewhere, but it seems to be some ancient structure that is comprised of two main towers, uh, one smaller than the other, one at the top of which is where the teleporter you land and leave from is located. Uh, from there, there is a large stone bridge heading towards the central area, uh, known as the Command Center, colloquially, in the center of which is the large glowing tube of elemental energy that is known to you as the Terminus Hadron. And it is from this location that you are spoken to by Vilthadon. Whenever you arrive, you appear in a various flashes of color, the same rainbow hue across all of you. Initially, it is dark. You see the Terminus Hadron begin to glow as elemental energies stir. Various multicolored lights fill the area. As you all hear a voice just in your head, Crystal Hunters, it would appear we have an emergency in the town. Come, <laughs> walk here. As soon as there was walk, he starts sprinting. 
does so. <laughs> I dawdle over. Good of you all to come so promptly. I'm sorry to take you all from your day-to-day -day lives. This voice fills each of your heads, the bodiless source of it, uh, seeming to come from the uh, the Terminus Hadron, though you would all be aware that that is merely a vessel that is being spoken through. Our enemy, Hygax, and his servant, Krita, are once again threatening the town, and your heroics are required to defend it. Have Can't they just leave us alone? Seriously. You'd think they'd get tired of us beating the snot out of them. <laughs> but alas, no matter how much snot is beaten from them, <laughs> they, get into it. they remain stalwart in their efforts to free Hygax and unleash their evil upon this material plane. Oh. Have you already seen what has transpired above? The sea boils like a bouillon of evil. But unfortunately for them, we're the chefs of justice. You mean bouillon? Oh, the sea is boiling? What? What flavor? Beef. Oh. Oh, it could make a beef. Oh. Well, they're like going to get served delicious justice, as far as I'm concerned. Good. I am glad that you are already abreast of the situation above. Yeah. I have no new information to give you. You already know everything you need. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Do not okay. allow Hygax's servant, Krita, who I believe his name I've said twice now. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully what, it's what? been reinforced twice. properly. Do not allow <laughs> Krita, the Krita. obsidian crystal tiefling that has plagued you for so long, to find their way down here, need I remind you, yeah. if the Terminus Hadron were to be destroyed, Hygax would be released. Uh -huh. <gasps> Good. We are all That's on the. It's not going to happen on our watch. Excellent. Yeah. Then go, Crystal Hunters, defend Celis Field. Before dinner. Right. Starts running back toward the teleporter. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna get very tired before this is done. They're Jogging in place, eyes. waiting for the others at the end. <laughs> tired. I know not of tired. <laughs> you have to conserve your energy. Or if you do it after dinner, you're going to throw up. Throws the core, the, another core <laughs> over her shoulder. I might throw up. Yeah. Same. <laughs> we both might throw up with different varying levels of enjoyment. Oh, the teleporter. You get back to you the teleporter. You guys coming? <laughs> you guys uh, return back. As you are about to teleport away, you just hear an echoing uh, re reassur uh, reassurance in your head as you just hear Crystal Hunters. No. That the elemental power is in your hands. Trust it, and you cannot fail. I bite my lip, I look away. My patron's so cool! As you do so, <laughs> you are all <laughs> taken into the same beams of light. Uh, as you go, as you are redeployed back into the city, the illusory magic that disguises you as humans is peeled away mid-transportation. The weapons that you have, the armaments that you would normally use as you are mid-teleportation are summoned in dramatic flashes of light to you as you form them out of radiant crystal energy. Ooh. Your bodies take on the hues they naturally have in a glamorous... <laughs> in a glamorous show of lights and not terribly high special effects budget shots. Your horns <laughs> reassert themselves. <laughs> elements! <laughs> swarm around you. You are teleported back to the town square. The guards seem to have left. As you all arrive in flashes of light, you stand in formation. Your normal skin colors as crystal tieflings exposed. Your weapons in hand. Feeling prepared to deal with whatever threat has come to Celis Field this day. As you do, you hear... 
another contact is a, an earpiece, a special type of sending stone that you were given by the deputy mayor of the town of Sellisfield, uh, Christile, one of the only people who is aware of both of your identities. You hear them contacting you as you hear in all of your heads uh, together, Crystals, this is Deputy Mayor Christile. The town is in danger. The lake has begun to boil and a dangerous steam fog has covered the docks. High Gax must be up to their old tricks again. We need you to do something. Okay. <laughs> On it. I'd tell you what they were doing, but there's fog and I can't see. I can. Because <laughs> I'm not, I, I can do that. <laughs> I can see through fog normally. <laughs> you can see down by the harbor, this fog, which you now know to be steam, uh, is covering the majority of it. The the docks appear to have been uh, completely encased by it as it begins to encroach and move out towards the rest of the town. What would you guys like to do? Uh, can I notice anything through the fog, uh, since Kainite tieflings can see through those normally? Uh, what was the range again that you could see out to? And you're not in the fog yet, just so you know. You're still quite a ways away oh, from right, it. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, then never mind. That, that, this is way more than 60 feet away. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I can I can see my normal sight through fog. Uh, that's just that's just my thing. Uh, mm -hmm. that the kyanite tiefling gets in the crystal tiefling. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, how are we gonna get out there? We kill the fog. <laughs> Pulls out the sword. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. That's uh, easier said than done. I mean, what's yeah. fog but the trees of air? Air. Sounds like we need to bring in the big guns. And I'll start summoning John Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you strike Sorry, a can you say that again for me, just so I can be sure I heard you correctly. <laughs> Air, it's time we bring in the big guns. John Paul, come to me. And I'll do like a cool pose. As I'll you like bend backwards. As you bend backwards. <laughs> There is an eruption as air seems to begin forming and twisting around you. This almost scream-like echo of air constitutes behind you and begins to take physical form as electrical energy and wind bind together to form the humanoid shape of what looks like a, um, a humanoid being, an elemental, relatively featureless, uh, well-built being. Standing behind you, mimicking the pose that you take, taking on the same form, and as soon as it appears, though it's initially in the same stance as you, it stops, crosses one leg over the other, floats back into the air, and crosses its arms and tilts its head back, looking out over your shoulder towards whatever direction you're in, as you summon um. your primordial agent. <laughs> Shiny-eyed looking, that's so cool! Every Hi, time! <laughs> oh no. Cool. Nope. <laughs> Too cool. I set off a fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> There's not even fire here. So glad the mayor installed those. <laughs> <laughs> They're really gonna improve safety. <laughs> fire safety what is are important. What waiting for? <laughs> it wasn't uh, a fire alarm. It was an egg timer. <laughs> well, how right. are we gonna get out? How are we gonna get out onto the fog? Is he gonna like carry us or? Um, I mean, I guess I'll like step into the swirling, screaming air that takes of Jean Paul and kind of get sucked up. If you were to give a size to this creature, what what, what would it be? Oh Indeed. yes, how big um, is he? I would like to summon him huge. All right. As you do, he appears. He then buffs up almost as if one muscle at a time is increasing in size. It's just. <laughs> As it increases and grows up, it reels back and lets out this howling roar, and then it resumes its legs crossed, arms crossed stance, as it tilts its like... head and contorts its body at a very uncomfortable looking, but very uh, appealing angle. <sighs> Can I, like, get sucked up into the air that comprises him and end up on his shoulder? Uh, yeah, it, you could, it could try to carry you. I will know for your guys' sake, the fog is not, like, out on the water currently. It is coming into the town. You could oh, move okay. to it simply oh. by walking to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then I guess I I'll do that. I style, so... Looking I up. sprint toward the fog. <laughs> All right. Uh, could John you... Paul, forward! 
Do you have an effect to put on John Paul to make him huge? Could you put that on him? Yes, I will. Okay. As you all prepare yourselves, you rush forward, heading towards the steam. You see some houses appear to be burning. You hear the sound of sizzling as you get close to it. And then, uh, you, as you go, you see various people rushing away, fleeing from it. Some of them appear to have burns from where they came into contact with this steam. Uh, as they, as they continue to flee, you hear a voice that you recognize. Uh, you hear the voice of a goblin smith that has frequently, as another one of the people that knows both of your identities, uh, both as the crystal hunters and also as your humanoid counterparts, as you see the, uh, what, not elderly, but getting up there in years, somewhat more muscular than you would expect from a goblin, uh, dark green-skinned goblin come rushing out. Their clothes somewhat look like on fire, but also damp from the steam. Just like, <laughs> as they flee out from the encroaching steam. As they do, you hear this uh, cracking sound, and you see from deep within the steam cloud, a massive rock, flaming, is hurled, seemingly in his direction, flies oh. past him, misses him barely, and hits a produce stall. As it does, pieces of burnt wood, vegetables, and apples scatter about the area, burnt to a crisp. <laughs> now they must die. <laughs> <laughs> They're cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> gonna like walk up to uh, the goblin uh, Dunkir I believe his name yes. was right are you okay oh. oh crystals you're here oh thank goodness Ooh, whatever is in the harbor is making more than my blood boil whatever it is is oh it's bad and it's angry picks up charred apple like Pikachu with the ketchup bottle <laughs> These were the crop from summer grass. I had yet to try them. <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss, Constantine. It's fine. Constance. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Justice will be served. You hear the flapping of wings and a familiar. <laughs> <laughs> as coming out of the steam upon the back of his trademarked, very unique, very marketable looking wyvern, uh, the form of an obsidian tiefling wearing tight black armor, carrying a, a great axe, white hair streaming behind them, their skin as black as the night, their horns uh, almost reflective in how, uh, in how dark they are, comes... Uh, comes out, flying up above the steam cloud, looking to all of you, seemingly laughing at the misfortune of your destroyed apples. As they do, Dunkir looks up. Krita! I should have known it would be you! As he lands on a roof, his wyvern landing on top of it. <laughs> Krita looks over towards the lot of you, cocks his head to the side. Looks like today will be the final day of our struggle, Crystals. Lord Hygax <laughs> has grown tired of his imprisonment. And today is the day he shall shatter the planar membranes and be free. That won't happen, Krita! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> looks at Script, looks at him. That won't happen! <laughs> oh. For a second, I thought he was going to quit, and then he said the second part, and I was like, ah. Oh. To ensure we reach your precious crystal sanctuary, he has called upon the aid of a powerful friend. Surely you will remember him. You defeated him once before, but he has been restored. Behold, <laughs> the reawakened power of Gungirok! And he motions dramatically <laughs> over towards the steam. As you see, sauntering out from it, a massive form towering above the houses near it. As you become aware, start to become aware of this massive shadow within it, of a single red glowing eye-like light piercing through it before you can make out his physical shape, you feel the, gr the ground under your feet trembling as the footfalls of whatever this is uh, shake the earth beneath you. You see walking out, hair almost ablaze, 
the massive form of a fire giant you have previously defeated, Gungirok. No, not Gungirok. But how? Well, well, well. Back again to get your ass kicked twice? Yeah. Throws a charred apple at it to a start initiative. <laughs> As it walks forward, the air about it seems to burn and sizzle in their very presence. You see, as it comes forward, it had not been there before, but in place of one of its eyes, the sight of the death blow that had defeated it, a very large black steel frame covers half of its face with a large red glowing gemstone set into it. His hair, as he gets close to you, you see his eyes uh, begin to focus, and his hair takes on this reddish glow and seems to turn into flame as the fire giant takes up a great sword it's carrying, gives it a sweep! And I would like everybody to roll initiative. Let's oh, go! Did, I, did, did, did my coach? apple? Did my apple hit it? It would have. <laughs> it would have hit it and incinerated immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it Y'all. couldn't have bounced off. Guys, I'm upset. Oh. It's kind of sweet. Hi. So close. You were able to get over it last time when you dealt that wound to his eye. <laughs> I guess I'll have to get over it again. <laughs> I see. You dare approach us. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Can, can Jean Paul have put me down yes, at some totally, point during totally. this? Cool. <laughs> I just Absolutely. Shoot down through screaming whirlwind of. I'm gonna throw you guys on the map real quick. <laughs> oh, no, you have a, you have advantage on initiative. Let's go. Yes, he does. Oh, Twilight clerics are fun. Oh God, why am I closest? You're not. I'm moving you back here. Okay. You guys, you can put yourselves anywhere you want in that, that area, we'll say. Yeah, I'm good, where I am. I'm good, too. Um. Oh, you guys are way too close to Jean-Paul. This is a problem. Oh, I'm inside him. Oopsie. Yeah. I'll be, I'll, um, I'll be. I think I because they changed his side, I'm going to have to... So he is he is a currently a huge Perfect. creature. Well it's not adjusting yeah. his it's interesting. It's not adjusting his uh Hold on. I thought that effect would adjust his uh actual size size. Just give me a sec to uh what would it be? I believe it's Is it fifteen for this? Come on. Come on. Big. See, there we can't is. be intimidated by big, by, big. by Gung Rock because so we have a big big, big. <laughs> We also have big, big. Kaiju fight. Perfect, and I will hide behind everyone. Sounds good. You're <laughs> sturdier than me. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> going straight to the top of initiative. The first person that's going to go as Jean Paul, the primordial agent, begins to move forward. Again, his size increasing. You see his musculature change, and it seems to buff up as if trying to match the fire giant that is currently in front of it. The first person to go, Constance. Hell yes. Whoa. Oh. Get him. Okay. Get I can go get him. 30 feet, correct? Yes. All right. You can also, as you are a rogue, uh, you can use your bonus action to dash if you want to. But all I, you also have your scimitar of speed, so perhaps you want to save your bonus action. Yes. And this thing, that this uh, uh, a Gungi Rock, he's a... Uh, he, he's big and on fire, you said? Uh, he's hot. It's not so hot. Okay, so yeah, I should describe this as well, because this is what happened at the start of your turn. I should note the steam that begins to encroach upon all of you. Uh, it does start to burn. You do feel like being within it for too long will be hazardous. You will be making saves at the start of your turns. I'm going to apply those to you now, actually. Um, but you don't get the impression that being specifically near him would cause you to burn. You have fought him before, of course. You had a previous adventure where you faced Gungirok. Um, you know from that That's encounter, though he is a, a very hot individual, though his body is able to generate fire, uh, simply being near him does not pose any risk. Getting hit by him is a different story, however. Hmm. I'm gonna... Uh, so I, could you make me a constitution save? For the start of your turn? That is not good. <laughs> what Ooh. did you get? You got... Alrighty, so you're gonna take a little tiny bit of fire damage just right out the um, gate. Um. Oof. And I'm just going to imply the effect that'll make this automatic for everybody. 
and boom, there it is. Uh, you are going to take 1d12 fire damage uh, just from being within the steam. Ah, okay, so you take 10 damage right out the gate. Oh. As the steam begins to burn, you can tell that his presence is what's causing the steam. Ow. Ow, okay. indeed. We are going to do what we call a drive-by. I hope. <laughs> I <laughs> hope we can do this. Uh, how far can I go? 30 is... And then with the bonus act... Well, once I move 30, even with the scimitar, I can't move anymore, right? Uh, once you go 30, you could use your bonus action to dash, because you're a rogue, which would give you another 30 if you wanted. But then you couldn't use the scimitar to make the extra attack. No, that's fine. We are going to... Would that dash be either the bonus action or the main, or an action? Bonus action, because you're a rogue. But you can make it a regular action. Okay. So we're going to move... I should note, you can only make the bonus attack action with the scimitar, but the bonus attack, mm -hmm. uh, if you take the attack action. I believe you have to, you have to attack first to use mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. I did not look through any of this earlier. <laughs> um, so... We are using it as we go, uh, learning it as we go. Um, uh, let's let's start basic. Uh, we are going to. Uh, she, she's angry. She's the apples. So we're going to we're going to just hit it uh, both times with the scimitar. Okay, so go up towards it. So the scimitar speed is on your weapons. Uh, roll the mm -hmm. attack against it. That's a plus nine, right? Yes. Okay. You rush forward as you strike it, you hit. Now, I would say, for the purposes of what we're doing, I actually have him on an illegal space. You do have an ally that's right beside him, so you can get your sneak attack. I know that Jump you're new. Ball! I know you're. Yes! I know you're. Hell yeah. I know you're new to rogues. So just to go over how that works again, um, yes. every, you can do it once per turn. Uh, if you hit a creature and you either have advantage or you have an ally that's not incapacitated within five feet of what you're hitting, you can roll your sneak attack damage. Uh, you would also know that uh, as a rhyme knife tiefling, uh, rogue rather, you can trade d6s for the various effects that are uh, that are listed on your thing. You can choose to do that if you wish to, or you could just deal the full 4d6 damage along with your attack. It's your call. Uh, we can let, let, let's let's do the rhyme knifey stuff to show off the rhyme knife. Sure. Available in the crystal tiefling book. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> let us do the thing that we do when we do it. Do you need a minute to look at what they all are? Uh, it's in freezing razor, right? Yes. There's uh, oh. all the things that are down in the freezing razor section of your actions tab. Uh, those are all the effects. You also have a thing in your abilities tab that. Uh, that just lists them all under Freezing Razor. Yeah. Um. They're very, very good. Uh. Let's try Tendon Cut. All right. God, this song fucking slaps. All right, Tendon Cut. So we'll do the attack first, then. Um, because your tree, your uh. Let's see. Go to your sneak attack. There should be an effect there that says uh, damage 2d6. Uh, sneak attack, damage, 2d6, roll self. Yeah, That's apply it. that and then make your damage roll with your scimitar. Okay, apply that to him. To you. And go be Damn it! I did it to him. Well, now you've given him more damage. No! <laughs> All right, you apply that to yourself and then you roll your damage. Okay. Apply this is just self. like the last time he destroyed the apples. And then I take the tendon cut and no. drag. No, then you then you roll oh. your damage. We're doing your damage oh. first. So scimitar oh, yeah. is speed, the d6 plus six. Okay, d6 plus six. Eh. You strike. You deal 15 points of damage to it. Now go to tendon cut and make him make the save. Make him make the save. His wah. He succeeds. I'm afraid. As you go towards him, having previously taken him down using this attack, as you rush to him, you dart to the back of his leg and try to cut into it, but he shifts, and you notice that he has added armor plating to it since last you fought, clearly to adapt to this very strategy. However, you still manage to cut into him, and you do deal the uh, 15 points of damage. Okie dokie, I think that's me then. Uh, you still have your bonus action. Oh, I do! 
Yeah. But you could use to make another attack with <laughs> the scimitar was, there if was you so wanted. Much, there was so much rolling, I was confused. Yeah, let's do it again. All right. Attack with the scimitar. <laughs> go. Whack. Go spinky. You strike, that hits. So this time, because you've already used sneak attack, you can't do it again this turn, so you would just roll damage. Just the d6 plus 6 again? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, oh. and you deal 12 points of damage. Gain a style point. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Alrighty. Yeah, it, that's and that's you? Okay. Yeah. All right, Clifton! <gasps> uh, Clifton! You take 11 points of fire damage. I don't like that. Ooh, Ooh uh, these rolls are being mean. Uh, uh, am I not resistant to it? To fire? Yeah, because of because uh, of the sword I have. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I forgot that that would give you. So let's, uh, you would take instead half of that. So you would take five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't put that on your sheet. I apologize. I'll do that now. No, it's fine. Resist. I'm just glad it's coming into play immediately. <laughs> Fire. Indeed. <laughs> it is your turn. Um, is this house destroyed? Like, uh, like, like I can see like there's an entrance here and there's like, like, like steps going out on the other side. The purpose like, is what we're doing. Sure. Yay. Uh, he will step forward and then he will try to diagonal here, but I'll probably have to go through Jean Paul. Um. Da -da -da -da. So if I, if I do have to go through Jean Paul, then that'll be a little bit harder. Um, da, 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 da. And I will go there. Uh, did John, did Jean Paul do double movement? Um, did did no. going did I go through Jean Paul? Like, do I have to add oh, five no. to my movement? No. Okay. Then Does I will go ya and then ya. <laughs> Does he just hear like the whispered screaming? Uh, that the wind? Well, that effect would only have been whenever it appeared. Ah, That's more of a you thing than it is a Jean Paul yeah. thing. Uh, as you rush by, you rush through it. He lifts up his leg to let you roll under it as you get by. You rush into the house. There's a moment of silence. Then you burst out the door on the other side dramatically <laughs> and charge towards him. Go ahead, do your stuff. Da -da 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 -da. Um. I'm a little bit too close to Jean Paul. I don't want to don't want to hurt him uh, with my dance, uh, but I really want to activate it though. <laughs> <laughs> you do need to use a bonus action to activate your sword, just so you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't do it this turn anyway. Uh, I will activate my frost brand. My frost brand. Okay. I turned it on for you. Do 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 do. Uh, and then I will go for uh, some attacks. Alrighty, go get him. Da -da -da -da. First attack. Hiya. That is a hit. Let's nice. go! Hi -ya! That's it! Yeah! <laughs> <Nish>. <laughs> you strike him, dealing 17 points of damage as the sword in your hand begins to glow a pale blue. As you strike, the mist around you is almost cut away as the steam is cooled back down whenever you strike. We'll go for a second attack. Mm-hmm. Hiya! And that's a hit. Hiya! You strike, you deal another 14 points of damage. I would like to, on this attack, uh, attempt to use severance. All right, go ahead. So burn the focus points, then go ahead and do that. Boing. Boing. Make him make the same. I know he's a giant, so this probably won't work, but if it does, it'll be so good. <laughs> Get you guys going for the legs. Yes! He not once. Oh. Yes! <laughs> I feel your pain, Gungarok. I feel it. You go for the I other. I you before, Gungarok. I know how you move. <laughs> as it slams down onto one knee, as you cut into it, you apply the effect. All right, it'll have disadvantage on attack rolls for the rest of the encounter. <laughs> Worthless crystals. Your oh. pests. And that'll be that'll be me. All right, Lorelai, you are on deck. However, right. it is Gungarok's turn. <gasps> uh -oh. No. It gets back up, stands up. It is going to go for two attacks, and it's going to make them against the two people adjacent to it. Uh oh. <laughs> it raises up its weapon. It strikes at Clifton first. 
It has disadvantage, which doesn't matter a lot when you roll two 18s. Uh, yep. <laughs> Clifton, it's massive flaming weapon, which becomes white hot with flame from its body as it strikes you. Uh, hits, breaking apart part of the house that's near you on its way in. You take 38 <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. As it hits. We have a cleric. Sparks fly from your body as it connects with you. <laughs> as it hits the ground, spins, digs it, and strikes towards uh, Constance. Same attack. Constance, you, as it's coming towards you, you leap towards the blade, briefly put your foot on it, and jump off of it to dodge it entirely. It does not hit you. You missed! <laughs> You did this one! And then spins! It was right in front of you! It raises the, its massive greatsword up towards the sky as if it's about to bring it down on Jean Paul, but that is the end of its turn. It's going to make a save against, uh, against Severance. And it is going. No! It succeeds. No! Oh well. I, I made him miss one Got attack! Out of it, yeah. yeah. Lorelei, you take one point of fire damage. All right. It's Jean Paul. Your... All right, what is your initiative? So Jean Paul will go on your turn. Um, so you're, you're gonna use your action to make him attack. Go. Yeah. Um. I. Why does he have no hit points? That's so weird. I don't know. I also don't have spell slots for some reason. Do you I not? just have my fourth level ones. Yeah, that's. I was. That's, that's how warlocks, that's warlocks work. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Shit! Warlocks get very few spell slots, but they My get them back God. on short rests. Cool, 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 cool. I and, knew that. I um, mean, Jean. Okay, one sec, will I? <laughs> I didn't even take Eldritch Blast, so I can't even make the joke of Eldritch Blast. Right. <laughs> there. Now he's got his hit points. Cool. All right, you should be able to click on his sheet and bring it up. And you should be able to I make attacks. Okay? I'm prepared. Yeah. Uh. She'll do another fucking back bend and point her finger forward. Sean Paul, show him what's for. And do the multi attacks. Is it like two multi attacks or a slam? Or is it multi Well, his multi attack slam? is he does two slams. Cool. I slam him. Come on and slam. And welcome to some pain, bitch. That's a crit! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Reels back. Him up. His hand <sighs> ceases to be one solid corporeal arm and begins to twist like a tornado that forms into a drill, like, of wind. He strikes towards him. Go ahead and roll his damage against him. All right! You deal! 32 oh, points oh, 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 oh. of lightning damage as you strike as Jean Paul strikes him with a right hook, and he still has one more attack. All right, get him with the left Let hook now. Go. The left, like we've been practicing, Jean Paul. And she's like doing punches as she's bouncing with joy. <laughs> this was such a correct decision. <laughs> <laughs> and that is also a hit. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> You deal another 16 points of damage as it strikes him with the left hook. This one just a solid punch to the gut. It reels back, just lets out a as lightning flickers along its body from the point of impact. All right, John Paul. Do a little fist bump, and that's my turn. It turns and it gives you a very large, slow thumbs up without fully turning towards you, just over the shoulder. Sean Paul! Uh, it would have to make the save against the damage, just so you know. It'll take half. Uh, Jean Paul takes one point of fire damage. <laughs> Jean Paul, you're hurt! Ignatius! You take. <laughs> two fire damage! Aha! <laughs> I'm gonna rage! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you do. Uh, I'm gonna use primordial leap to uh, jump over there and run here, and then I'll I'll be nice and go there. 
You rush forward, taking both hands on your great axe, which both sides of it... Uh, is this like a big woodcutting axe, or is this an actual great axe? It is kind of both. It is an oversized woodcutting axe. Okay. As you rush <laughs> forward, you begin to rage the brass elements of your body, your... Your horns and the brass metallic sections of your body begin to glow in response to your rage. Go ahead. Do your stuff. Uh, reckless attack. Yep, make sure you apply both effects. You strike. That's a hit! Hitting with your great axe, you deal a total of 16 points of damage. Take an attack! Hitting with the second one. That's a crit! Oh, oh my god, you guys! Oh. <laughs> Let's we fought him go. before. We know his patterns. I'm going <laughs> to use uh, my feet, I believe. Because I think I took it. Yes! Um... I'm going to reduce their speed by 10 feet, which, whatever. I, I don't think he's moving. <laughs> uh, but they uh, they are grievously wounded until the start of the next turn. They have disadvantage on all attack rolls. Alrighty. I have a spot for that in my action. <laughs> Severance <guess>. anyways! <laughs> this. Alrighty. Is that that's, you? That's Ignatius. All right, Callus. Then we're back to the top. Callus, you oh. fail the save and you take eleven points of fire damage. These D twelves are I being do. so unkind. Oh, no. I'm a spaghetti man. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get uh, up here. I think. Uh, so brave. With if is. Everyone within 30 feet of me? Hold on. <laughs> You're in great I'm the farthest from you, so yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, I will <clears throat> use uh, my channel divinity, uh, Twilight Sanctuary. Alrighty. Um, love that effect. I, I love Twilight Clerics so much. They're so cool. I, I, I'm excited to play one for real. Heckin' uh, it gotta target y'all, y'all. Oh, y are you ta are you the temporary hit points happen on their turns? Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, it's at at the end of each of the creatures' turns. Like if any creature that ends their turn there that you choose, uh, you roll it against them then. Gotcha. Including yourself though. So you rush forward. You raise your. Uh, I assume your shield with the symbol of a mirror on it, as you do, t a twilight aura, this uh, dusk-like light, spreads out into the area. Can Gungarok's gain the power to turn it into nighttime. Stay relatively close to me, and he's then going to, as a bonus action, cast Spiritual Weapon over oh, my yeah. big boy. Yeah. What is your Spiritual Weapon? Um, his spiritual weapon is I. What is the, what is a weapon of Emir? The physical uh. manifestation of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that could possibly be. A large uh, bladed fidget you. spinner. <laughs> As you, if you're going with something that represents a mirror, um, uh, a war hammer, a particularly heavy war hammer would be the. The main thing, or a war pick, would be the things that you would associate with a mirror. Oh, those are really violent. I'm gonna go with the with this with the rapier. Okay. <laughs> the, I just like it appears, Aww. and he's like, "Oh no, not that one!" <laughs> it like changes <laughs> shape. Aww. And heckin. I love him. <laughs> he just oh. creates the war. Like, oh no, I forgot how to no. No. <laughs> no Stabbing implement far less threatening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as it's not as brutal. It's not as brutal. Um, it's elegant. <laughs> and uh, Heckin is gonna poke him. All right, go for it. <laughs> Heckin, where are you at? Where are you at? Spiritual weapon. I got so many spells. Welcome, Heckin... to Welcome to cleric being. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah, welcome to the I'm... club, buddy. Y'all! Tax and Druids be like, I am spells. <laughs> Alrighty, as you do, as you attack him, that hits. Yeah! Uh, it deals 1d8, so heck him. Oh, um, I, this, does, this counts as a spell attack, right? Uh, uh, yes, it does. Okay, then yeah, I can't apply my thing to it. Then heckin' take this! So as you attack, oh! Oh, you <laughs> surge it towards him, it flies at him as you all unleash this joint attack, each of you getting in your strikes against it, knocking it off balance. Heckin' uh, Ignatius rushes up, jumps up, and hits it with two attacks, almost knocks it down. And then your spiritual weapon soars above it, strikes it down into the ground. You hear just this colossal, and as it crashes to the ground, his great sword flies from his body, and it lands about forty feet away from it, crashing into a house. And you just hear you hear a long drawn out, as its head tilts to the side, stabbed in the neck, just like last time. As it yeah! does. <laughs> Let's not do this again. All right. Please. Good job, Callus. And I'll like run over and put my hands up and uh, sparkles, a shower of sparks will <sighs> from my hands. So I'm like, yeah. As it clatters to the ground, all too soon as you begin to celebrate, uh, you hear the familiar laugh of Krita cutting through the celebrations from above. Once again, just a. <laughs> As you all look up towards it and you see the wyvern flying now, something, uh, Krita upon its back, but in its hands clutching, uh, a figure, what looks to be a young man that, uh, I would like you all to roll a perception check. <gasps> oh. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Nope. Uh, yeah. Oh, come on, Lorelei! <laughs> oh, I got the good one. Nice. You ADHD fuck. <laughs> Yeah, those of you that those of you that got over a uh, twenty, so Clifton and Constance. I love that you're so good at seeing things, Ignatius, but you're just, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you're, just you're raging. To be fair, um, you see, clutched in, in the wyvern's eyes. hands, a young man couldn't be more than fourteen years old, who at first appears to have just this pale, completely white skin, uh, and you notice horns upon their head, and you notice after a moment of investigating Constance and uh, Clifton. Like you, the person being held appears to be a crystal tiefling. What? As you see them panicking, and you see arms crossed on top of it, uh, Krita, uh, yelling down towards you. Uh, let's see. Yelling down towards you. You have been defeated, Crystals. You may have prevented us from reaching the Terminus Hadron, but we no longer need it. We have found the key! And it shakes the boy, and you hear just like, ah, ah! This young man, this crystal tiefling hiding under your very noses, possesses the planar energies needed to release Hygax, even without your precious crystal sanctuary. You have lost! Prepare yourselves for oblivion! As he does, he turns, and you see the wyvern darts and flies out of the town, soaring through no! the air. Uh, uh, John Paul would at least try to reach out and grab him from out of the air. As you do, the the distance between you to start, as it reaches forward, uh, it one of its hands extends out and tries to grab it, but it just barely doesn't manage to, as the faster wyvern escapes. Oh. He was distracting us! As the oh, no. steam <clears throat> seems to begin to clear... Uh, Dunkir rushes up to you, uh, rushes up to all of you, um, where is it? I don't know who that kid is, but if he's one of you, then he, he must have come here to see you, right? <sighs> what do you think's going on? Something terrible. I don't know. If he can really do what he says, we need to get back. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Um. How do we do that? <laughs> well, first, I think we should probably go to Vilfadon and tell him about what happened. He probably has an answer or two. 
or he doesn't. But okay. he might. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, I that's bet a good he idea. Will. I hope. Hey, John Paul, can you help me out? Everything. <laughs> John Paul, can you help me out? I don't want to run. <laughs> John Paul. Just moves towards you, yeah. Just its hand becomes a brief vortex that sort of pulls you up to your feet Wee. and pulls you along like a <gasps> very powerful vacuum holding you aloft. <laughs> He's I, just I like, I don't want to run. I hurt all over. <laughs> I run up with my arms already up, ready to be. And I pop up <laughs> on the other shoulder. Are you all choosing to return to the Crystal Sanctuary then? We yeah. do. As you do, as you all take out the coins and begin prepare yourselves to return, uh, you see Dunkir once again looking over towards where uh, Krita f led to in the distance, looking to you. Uh, just be careful, Crystals. I don't know what he's up to, but you can't let your guard down. Right. My guard is never down, because it's also never up. Oh. Yeah, Clifton will guard for us. <laughs> Oh, they won't let me do that anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they got a restraining order. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that it would be possible to enforce something like that. <laughs> the guard is never down, but the pants are, right, Kali? Uh -huh. your, 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 pa your pants aren't down. I just thought it'd be cute. Uh, if oh, okay, okay. <sighs> Sorry, they're dealing with the trauma of murdering a giant for the second time. Yeah, You're getting really good at it. I don't know Callie, if that's the a great the giant thing. slayer. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> can't wait to tell everyone. Well, that sucks. We can't tell everyone. <laughs> yeah. Lorelai gets quiet for a moment. <laughs> that's roll. <laughs> Your coins activate. You are once again teleported to the. Uh, entryway of the Crystal Sanctuary. Beams of light matching each of your individual colors seem to scoop you up and take you elsewhere. For the purposes of what we're doing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys all a short rest. Thank you. <laughs> Feel free to use hit die. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I can summon John Paul again. John Paul's gone. Yep, John Paul disappears. Rest. He did his bit. Yeah. yeah. There's a tearful goodbye somewhere. Oh no! Channel Divinity comes back on long rests! Dang it! Oh no! Ha! <laughs> ah, I got literally my mouth back. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when else are we gonna use these HD? Habya! Habya! There we go. I use all mine. <laughs> oh no! I have one left, actually. I still have one you left. You know what? Not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm not playing a cleric today. <laughs> <laughs> as you I don't guys have to worry. As you, as you guys teleport back in, the cavern once again lights up with the energy of the Terminus Hadron, and you once again hear in your head, Crystals, come stand before me. Tis us. <laughs> I scamper over. Vilfadom, what's going on? Who was that other, that other tiefling? The one that is in possession of Krita. Strange. I should have been able to detect their planar energies. But perhaps their origin makes it difficult for me to do so. Based What's on their description, they were a Howlite tiefling, imbued with the power of the positive plane of energy. That oh. is the opposite of the plane that Hygax is sealed within. It is possible that using their energy to oppose the prison of Hygax, they may be able to allow him to escape. Oh, neutralizing negative and positive energy. We never foresaw this. Weird how we talked about this earlier today and now it's happening. Sh shut the fuck up, Cliff. <laughs> 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 Crystals, though I have no idea what he plans to do with that child, he is rapidly leaving the area the sanctuary can teleport you to. I can send you as far as I am able, but you will have to make the rest of the way on foot. Okay. 
sooner the better. If only... If only I had completed my construction of the Crystal Speeders. Then you would have been able to use those to get there much more quickly. I'll be in charge of this Oh, now. you have to tell me more about those? That sounds so cool! You see this, like, arcane hologram of what looks like a really decked-out wagon just appears in the air. <laughs> but its construction is still missing a thing or two. Maybe they need to be a little bit smaller. Perhaps. We need a horse, I think. But this is besides <laughs> the point. Crystal Hunters! Retrieve that child, and prevent Hygax from escaping. Okay. I'll pack you know we're on it. I'll pack next. Perfect. <laughs> you return. We're gonna need him. <laughs> you guys return back to the teleportation area. You once again are beamed out. You end up a little bit outside town, about half a mile outside of the town. Uh, heading towards an area you've been to before. There's a particular battleground, some ruins that had previously, uh, of a town that had previously been ransacked and abandoned that it seems like any time you battle Creed, it always seems to draw you back to this same town filled with abandoned buildings. Convenient. Oh, hmm, not the, the quarry this the time. The quarry, yeah. <laughs> 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 it would take you about half an hour to get there at a quick speed. What would you guys like to do? Constance will eat through five apples. <laughs> I guess we... You're gonna give yourself acid room. reflux. Can I have a Granny Smith? <laughs> As she was about to bite into it. Yeah, here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> gonna get this we're gonna get creed us so good Ooh. all right only baby cows. they're getting is this baby to the face yeah he holds up his this, hands. this baby <laughs> to the face as you guys rush forward you make your way there eating apples along the way to refuel yourselves that's our hit die right there yep hit yep. apple yeah that's hit die i needed apple it <laughs> Song of Apple. You don't got a bard, but you got the Song of Apple. Uh, as <laughs> Apple of Rest. As you arrive, the ruins of this town are overgrown, having been abandoned many years prior. Uh, this unknown set of ruins has been the site of various conflicts between the Crystal Hunters and Krita many times before, often within the remaining empty buildings being destroyed dramatically during their conflicts. As you guys approach, you would hear a voice from behind you, just as you're about to enter into the ruins of this old town. As you just hear this, um, and again, another familiar voice. The final person who knows of both your identities, though certainly the most mysterious of them, as you hear behind you. Lord in for more trouble, are you? <laughs> <gasps> is it him? Is your turn? I think it oh, is. Oh, goodness. Turning, you <laughs> find yourself in the presence <laughs> of Arkale Servia. A sun elf warlock of an unknown patron who has come to your aid in previous times, but sometimes also has served as your enemy. Clad in layers of dark robes with golden beads, rings, and ornaments decorating it. Uh, this is an individual who keeps his physical features largely hidden, but you can That's see fun. curly wisps of red hair escaping his hood, and one eye always seems to be revealed with this soft, pale pink hue always glowing from it. You do prove to be interesting, even when thrashing like fish on a line. Arkeel. Well, no time to fight today, Arkeel. What you doing here? Looking for something for your patron? Wonder want, who that is. Want an apple? He put, All he, the things they said, and he, also, do you have anything to do with this? He puts, <laughs> he puts his hand up towards, uh, <laughs> towards Constance, and the apple just floats out of your hand and over what? into his. I have not come today as an enemy. Indeed. I have merely come to make a suggestion to you. Mm, what's that? You are currently chasing the life of a single Howlite tiefling. You should abandon them, crystal hunters. <laughs> Save um, yourself and... this trouble. Why? You fight time and time again. 
over and over in these minor squabbles against Hygax. Perhaps it is time that you allow them to be released. Would it not make more sense, Crystal Hunters, to have one climactic final battle against Hygax, rather than strike against him futilely over and over? No, because like if he came here, that's like so many different variables. And on top of that, like, what's, what's your angle with this anyway? I squint. I merely take an interest in your motivations. <clears throat> we have to save that tiefling! Yeah! They're one of us! And the people of the town. We can't just let him come through and kill them all. <laughs> Quite. Well then, go then. Go save him. I will neither interfere, nor will I come to your aid. Well, we're going to have an awesome battle, and it's going to be so much fun. You're missing out. Continue as you are, and there will be many battles ahead. I'm sure I will get my fill. They turn. And they just begin walking away, opposite the direction of the runes. I still haven't forgiven him for that first fight, but... He was the one that led me to Frostbrand. He took mm. my apple. What's his deal? You're a crunch. We know from nothing him about him. him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know he likes apples or something, but besides that, he's so dreamy. He's. <laughs> a I don't trust that guy. He's kind of a jerk, yeah. Lorelai will pause and then fist bump Constantine as sparks go between their fists. Constance. Constance, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, she fist bumps Constance. I'm so sorry, sweetie. Why do they always get so weird when he's around? I don't know. You start to hear boyish yells coming from the direction <laughs> of the town. The sounds of distress. Let's go. <sighs> <laughs> As you rush forward, as you uh, move in, you see, at a distance, um, who is the highest passive perception in the group? Uh, definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have 15? a 16. Oh. Uh, where, where would passive perception be? Uh, it's your main, it's like page. main page. It's like near your speed and your AC on your main tab. Oh, mine is 15. Minus 15. Mine, mine is, is 15. Oh, I thought I heard minus 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually just dumb as bricks. <laughs> how can't are see you anything when there are chaos you, in front of me. How are you not dead? <laughs> minus 15. I can't see things that aren't hiding. I am an apple. I am an apple. <laughs> I'm actually an apple this whole time. Apple. That's why they like apples. They need to have. They need to have something as close to their eyes as possible to even see them. As you I'm an apple tiefling from the delicious plane. As you approach, um, you see an old destroyed church. Most of the walls knocked in, but some still standing. Uh, inside, there is a very large statue uh, of a mirror that sits at the far end of the church. Through the broken walls, you can see that the Howlite Tiefling boy has been tied up and bound near the statue, and there are six individuals inside that don't seem to have noticed you upon your approach. Uh, these individuals, um, you know them to be uh, the base flunkies that High Gax employs, these humanoid elemental golems that you've come to know as Gax soldiers. Trained in the basics of martial combat, usually deployed as a, a means of basic uh, foot soldiers. You see they seem to be channeling various elemental energies on their bodies, which are each effectively these just gray, almost featureless blobs of what almost looks like clay covered in different arcane symbols. Uh, you see them performing various uh, gestures to channel elemental energies around the child. You see some of them with bits of chalk and paint seem to be drawing arcane symbols onto the ground as if they're preparing the area for some kind of ritual. 
and they have not noticed you yet. I will, I'll share a map with you right away. Just to let you know what the area looks like. You would be approaching from the from map south. They would be positioned like so. You can tell, having fought them before, there are three different elemental types of them here. Two of fire, two of ice, and two of lightning. Alright, so I think the plan is we all run to the entrance and pose dramatically, and then run in and fight them all separately. Huh! Oh. So uh, smart. Let's do that! <laughs> I am the brains of the bunch. This is why you're our leader. <laughs> I am? Have we? I am. <laughs> Did we ever establish a leader? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, well, yeah, boy. Ignatius was the one that took out, that took out, that took out a, a I've already forgotten the time. Okay, name. now wait a minute. Hold on, hold The first time, the, not the second time. Pause. It is my patron, though. Not that I have a problem with it. I just want to point that out. You know what? How about Jean Paul be our leader? That's a good point. <gasps> Jean Paul. But what if we need what if we need direction and Jean Paul's not? Jean Paul always is here. Well, we Jean Paul will, ne will never will never be without Jean Paul. Jean Paul is in our hearts. Yeah, but, but right now we need his opinion. We need a vice leader. Well, well, I don't know. Hey, what do you think we should do? I think Ign I think Ignatius should be should be our vice leader then. <laughs> All right, as vice leader, I say we step in, pose dramatically, and fight them all. <laughs> oh, what a good idea. <laughs> Truly inspired. <laughs> That's always the plan. Okay. I've never been good at the poses, though. Is that what you guys are choosing to do? Poses. Yes, can, we I must. Can... We must get ready for pose. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to suggest I don't have my pose ready yet. I was going to say we distract them. I have an apple. Oh, okay. Ap yeah. Apple, good. What are you gonna do with it? I was going to throw it in there. Uh, oh. And then pose. Yeah. I, I mean, that could give is, us some. Is time. the apple not superfluous at that point? I thought maybe I would distract them depending on where I from where I throw it from. They would think that something is over there and then we can see. Well, I'm not very good at that. Yeah, we, you, you yeah, you You're really you good don't, at that. That's though. why that's why Cece would be throwing the apple. Mm. <laughs> and then I sneak up on them. Cliff, but you've the got posing. This. I mean, you guys can do the po I don't have my pose ready yet. It, it's it's not very good that, if we so. don't all do the pose. You two get ready with the apple thing. We'll get ready with our poses. When you throw the apple, we'll all run it. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, that works. Middle ground. Because uh, we too. Here, here uh, Constance, uh, he'll huh? like cautiously put his hand on your shoulder and cast uh, greater invisibility on you. <gasps> Ooh. Spicy. That's a great spell. Yeah. But you only get it for a minute. Yeah. So heckin... God. Where, where is anything on this sheet? <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Claire. <laughs> You're welcome to my domain, motherfucker. Shit's right. hard. I'm pretty sure go. that will be under your spells twilight category. Uh, yeah, I, th I found yeah. it. <laughs> Clerics are hard, man. <laughs> well, just all the crystal tiefling stuff with all the cleric stuff as well. <laughs> like... Yo -ha. All right. I'm spells you are and... now invisible and Adam. nothing you do will break that invisibility yes for a minute for a minute so you guys are gonna rush in in that case um <laughs> are you guys planning to rush in and do a pose uh so we're gonna let constance do their thing as soon as constant engages we're gonna run and do a pose and then just immediately start fighting them. okay so yeah. con so constance uh <laughs> what is you have a minute uh, what is your overall plan for approach? You know there are several holes in the walls, so you could get around the other side and sneak in, like, over mm. some of the rubble as, instead of going in the front, but what would you like to do? I... See, so what I want to do is I want to throw an apple so that when they're looking at the apple, they're facing away from the group, so that when they dramatically turn around, we're all posing. But you're not going to be posing with them. 
Oh. They're going to be posing. You know, yeah, I'm not in this. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I may propose, because I know you can't see it entirely. If I may I propose... I can't pose, so. If I may propose a, a course of action. Yes. I'm going to turn that off so I can see. Um, let's see. You can get a total of 90 feet in a round between your action, bonus action, and thing. So if we move you this way, you could get around to a point where you could find there's a hole in the church in the back uh, within about six seconds of movement that is like around here that would allow you to get in behind them where most of the group is, you could probably throw one pretty easily from there. You would have lost one turn's worth of greater invisibility. That is fine. Okay. This is what we will So the plan is, if I'm to understand this, you're gonna, you're gonna duck in, you're gonna throw an apple uh, mm -hmm. in the other direction, they're gonna then run in collectively and pose so that when they look back at them, the group over there is posing and then you're all just gonna go ham on them? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Yeah. For the purposes of what we're doing, why don't you roll me a sleight of hand check? <gasps> this is set dressing, <laughs> and it's matter. <laughs> he does. Sleight of yeah. hand. <laughs> this is oh, what D and D B. I vote we use thaumaturgy. Oh, so loud as shit. Yeah. See, you get in there, and all they see is this. What kind of apple are you throwing? Just curious. Uh, we're gonna throw one of these, like, like, well, like. Red Delicious is actually the most basic bitch apple, and this one's kind of mushy, so we're gonna throw it. We're gonna throw that. <laughs> <laughs> As Spooky reaches and picks one in person. You get in, you hurl it inwards towards them. It streams by all of them, just enough that they all sort of move and slowly turn just like their torsos to try to avoid it and look at it. As it clatters, hitting one of the old abandoned pews on the other side. They all turn and they look towards it. As they do, you guys all hear the clattering of something colliding with one of the pews, and you become aware that uh, Constance has done their thing. That's the signal! Go, 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 I'm gonna cast Prestidigitation on Callus, so he's fucking sparkling. Oh! You do, as you all rush in, you get into a pose. Do you say anything to get their attention? Uh, oh, thaumaturgy to make my voice really loud. We have arrived! Hunter Blue! <laughs> Light yellow! Uh, die! <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great! Invisible <laughs> thumbs up. I swear! <laughs> <laughs> We all looked at Callus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine was great, you gotta keep up. You gotta and that's it. Up. As you guys go on, elemental energies behind you let off these sparks. There's this, uh, the thaumaturgy sort of backfires, and there's this multicolored flash of light behind all of you as you pose, which catches you all off guard briefly, and as it happens, you're like, Ugh! very quick. Oh, I love it when that happens. <laughs> I'd like everybody to roll initiative. Yeah! Let's fucking go! Don't know why I thought it would be different this time. All the Gax soldiers get into the most generic martial arts poses <gasps> you could imagine as they prepare to charge oh, it. Oh, get it! I'm still reeling from getting, like, freaking super sorted. <laughs> Alrighty. Is that everybody? That's... Oh my god. Alright, so, first up is going to be Constance, who is still invisible. Uh, you're up first, and Lorelai, you're on deck. Yes! Oh, wow. Again, first turn. Um, Rogues. So... <laughs> Rogues. Um, this boy right here, this uh, Gax Shuckolger. Shuckolger. Uh huh. <laughs> we're gonna hit that one. We're gonna sneak attack that one. You gonna sneak up on him and get him? We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna be sneaky because he's 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 the closest and he's definitely got his back turned. Is the boyo here? The one tied up? Yes, he'd be up there. I don't have a token okay. for him, but that's where he'd be. He's okay. where this weird pug-looking thing is. That's totally a minotaur <laughs> statue. What are you talking about? It looks like a pug. I definitely... Listen, listen, I don't only have... I didn't have time to get Sid to make map assets, given how quickly we had to throw this together. <laughs> I know. You have a really a picture character, a pretty character picture. I think we did pretty good. I think we did pretty good, all things considered. <laughs> just said, it looks like a pug. You know, <laughs> That I sounds like, like uh, you, pro. I like pug. It's the Minipug. Get it's a... the Pugatar. <laughs> roll down, roll your attack, can I? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a plus nine, right? Yup. <laughs> okay. 
That hits. You can add your sneak attack if you want, which also means you can choose to use your freezing razor if you want. Okay, I have to remember to do this. Sneak, sneak attack. Well, I put it on me this time. Yes. Uh, well, hold on. Uh, so, which freezing razor are you choosing to use? Are you choosing to use one of them? Um, I am going to use... Uh, let us try tendon cut again, because we failed the first time. Okay, so yeah, you put the thing on yourself, roll damage against him, and then we'll do tendon cut. Alrighty. This fight what? just got crazy. <laughs> <laughs> as you rush forward, you bring your weapon down on him, you cut into him, as you do. Uh, it, it's like in a martial arts pose, like, one fist up in front of the other. You guys just see one of its arms just gets lopped off and falls to the ground. Oh. And it, it doesn't even seem to like register it. It just looks down at the absent space where its arm would be and then back up at all of you as if you'd done it. Uh, ah. so go ahead and roll tendon cut against it. Eh. it. Gotta hand it to you. It succeeds. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> just for that, I'm gonna hit it again. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a hit. Fucking die. You're not gonna die, but die. You cut into it again, cut a huge chunk out of it, it takes 12 more points of damage. Alrighty. I oh. think that's me. Alrighty. Then, up next would be... A Lorelei. Oh no, what do I Why do? Why do you- Oh no, Steam Cloud's still on you! <gasps> you shouldn't oh, be taking that damage! <laughs> ah! You're still on fire! <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, was, I was gonna tell you. I gave but you back that, your head. Never came up. All right, Lorelai, uh, Ignatius, you're on deck. Um. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm gonna use one of my spell slots. One of my two spell slots. Because mm -hmm. this is how warlocks I, work. I adore <laughs> you being like. I, I think I'm missing spell slots. Is one of my favorite things you've ever said about D and D. Don't want to talk about it. I'm casting. Uh, I'm casting arms of uh, Hadar. A warlock. Like, guys, I think I, I think something's broken. I I can only cast two spells. Is that where are the other ones? <laughs> it's like you're just on the phone with your, You're on the phone with your patron, just like yeah, yeah, no, uh, Velthadon. Vel like I I only got the two. Like where are the other ones? And they're both. Four Those levels? are the other ones. I don't... No, like the other spells. Like you know, like. No, I don't There's think you understand level. what I'm asking, Viltadon. Where are the other spells? Where, where the fuck are they? <laughs> All right, so sorry. Sorry for the joke. Um, what are you casting? I cast Arms of Hadar. Hadar? Hadar. Had Hadar. And so I imagine them not so inky, but like little like wind arms. <laughs> Similar to Jean Paul, it's like Jean Paul is this. So that only affects things me. within ten feet of you. Shit! I run forward first. Okay, <laughs> Mo show me where you're moving. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize this was an immediate spell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you got closer, it'd probably hit more of them. Uh, okay. That hits three of them, I think. Uh, and let me quickly target everything and see what's within 10 feet of you there. Yes, it would hit those three. Cool! I cast it! Alright, roll the so save. We... I will. You rush up, they... One nat 20s, but the other two fail. Oh. Alright! And because you're a warlock, this will be cast at 4th level, so your damage should be... 5d6. Uh, yes. Go ahead and roll it. Here I go! So you rush up, you cast it. Oh, not great That's damage. So many ones. The two Ugh. that failed take twelve necrotic damage each, and the one that succeeded takes six. <laughs> I have ten feet of movement. I start running back. Uh, you Guys! Move. Do you? Guys! You move twenty-five to get there. Shit! I move five. Feet. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> you go up, you cast it, you pose. Wind-like and necrotic energy strikes all of them. Then you see they all take a pose again, shake very suddenly. They seem to, like, freeze in place and look at you. And then just go, like, ah, at you, and then you just turn and begin running uh, back. Help. Is that you? Help. Nope. Ignatius. <laughs> Rage! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
is damned. I will remind you if you're doing AOE word. stuff that Lorelai, you do have your vortex that you can use several times. I do. Oh, I'm on him. I was like, there we go. Jew. <laughs> Good. Right, I remember. Sorry, sorry, uh, okay. You rush forward. You rage. You attack. Reckless attack. <laughs> Barbarian's got a kit, man. Mm-hmm. Don't fix what ain't broke. Second one. There we go. And great axe. Ah. Say hello to my not little friend. Why are you neutral? Why indeed? Um. It didn't say you had advantage. Uh, let's see. Get off me. I don't think you put both effects on you. Yeah, effect, it advantage says attack, turn re, and grant disavack turn. Both to me. Here, I'll put it on again. Yeah, just roll the attack again before you do. Yeah, it makes sense. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, I miss anyways. You miss no! anyways. So put the effect on you, and then you have one more attack, right? Uh, yes. Come mm. on. You can do it. Nat 20. Here we go. Yeah, it only has the one. What? Oh, and now it's gone. So th that's the ADV one. If I select the other one, it disables both. Then, so it, there should be oh. two buttons, just don't click the tiny button. Oh, see, they're just very, they overlap a lot. Got yeah. you. All right, I'm going to whack them. Okay, go for it. Do them a whack. You strike. <laughs> that's a hit. Heck yeah. Woo! <clears throat> you deal nine points of damage. All right, and that's me. <laughs> Callus, you are on deck. However, uh -oh. <laughs> the shock soldier is going to go. It looks towards you, Lorelai. You see electrical energy coat its body. It puts its hands out to the side, making these totally arbitrary gestures as if it's about to charge at you, and then does, shambling towards <laughs> you. <laughs> it is going to go... It's gonna go for two martial strikes on you. It tries to punch you. Help! It misses the first one entirely. <laughs> yeah! You take It takes a swing towards you. You raise up one of your arms. There's a, a combo <laughs> as it blocks it. It's gonna go for one Aha! more. All right. That hits. You know this will deal bludgeoning and lightning damage. Um... Ah, uh, I can resist it, can't I? Uh, you naturally have resistance to lightning damage, but you can. Yeah. You I'm did, gonna use my feet. You did take the the crystal tiefling feet ignition resistance. <gasps> available that, in the crystal really tiefling good? pack. Uh, oh, tell us more about yes. it. If you want, you can uh, you can use that to gain immunity to the damage type you can resist, which in this case is lightning. Um, yeah. So in that case, we're just gonna throw. I, I th don't think I coded that properly onto you, so give me one sec to throw it on you. You know, for the future sessions where we're going to use these characters. Um, mm -hmm. Of course. Resist. Oh, I'm caps locked. Resi I can do this every <laughs> fucking week. This will be fine. Immune, lightning. Uh, that'd be one, and it would you be... You would cry if you couldn't be Fenris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rest, so... Okay, I'll apply the effect for you this time, but it's on there for you. And you can use Thank that a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus uh, per short rest. So I'm going to put three on there, rest, then I'm going to tick one off because you've used one. Yeah. Alrighty, I think it's going to go for its attack. The bludgeoning will still go through, however. That's fine. It strikes. <laughs> Fucking punched in the stomach. Uh, you reduce eight down to two damage. <laughs> That's yeah. I can't do anything back. Callus, it is now your turn. Clifton, you're uh, on deck. Okay. E. Uh, I'm gonna get here. Uh, and I'm gonna try to heckin' uh pew this um Gax this Gax boy here. Right in front of Lorelei. Shock Olger. And I'm gonna heckin' guiding bolt. Get him. Heckin'. Come on. Wait. There you are. Take. 
this. <gasps> yeah. That's a hit. Yay. Bow. When you fire up you know, the <gasps> guiding bolt at it, deal 16 points of damage to it. Oh. Does that uh, grant someone advantage on him? Or yeah, that him grants advantage on an attack against him. Yes. Okay, cool. And uh, I will bonus action uh, do another... Uh, is it how is it dark here at all? Uh, middle of the day. It's in here. I would say no. Okay. Um, in that case, I will hacking. Any all look damaged. Uh, you you look. You're fine. I'm gonna hacking spiritual weapon again. Alrighty. And um. You are right here. I'm doing it. And just put it right dick right next to the same boy I just hit. Alright. And, and you're gonna uh, make an attack with it? Yes. <laughs> no. Strike, you give yourself advantage, you hit. No. And you deal enough damage that it crushes it, it is destroyed. <sighs> You see Lorelai mimic what Jean-Paul did in the previous fight, where she doesn't look back, but you see the thumbs up and a sparkle. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, Callus? That is me. Clifton! And then, Constance, you're at the top after all of the rest of the soldiers go. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would uh, move my way uh, over Nya toward this ice boy, uh, and I would like to use my bonus action to activate my sword. Uh, but uh, instead of attacking this turn, I'd, act I'd like to activate my planar legacy uh, <gasps> and and throw out a uh, a Cinelock snowball storm over in this direction. <laughs> Explain what that is. It's a snowball storm. <laughs> storm. Because, wow, because you uh, it is cast at a level equal to your uh, at a level equal to your proficiency bonus, so it's cast at third. So as you do, each creature in a five-foot radius sphere, so you are going to put... So a five-foot radius sphere would be that. So you're going to hit him with it? Uh, no. I will hit, uh... I'll hit... Th I'll hit the one that... I'll hit the one that Ignatius is fighting. That way that way he can he can potentially uh, get, move on to another one or uh, or could, uh, or could okay. like, at least help out with that. Uh, go ahead and roll the save against him. Da -da -da -da. hi -ya. Oh, I didn't freaking. There we go. Hi, yep. He oh, fails. Oh, well, good. <laughs> Hi, yep. You fire a series of balls of ice and snow at him. It strikes him. It is pelted to death. Ignatius, the one in front of you, is hit with snow enough that it collapses and it is destroyed. Yo, then, I'll, then I'll, like, round on this boy, and that's, that's yeah. me. Gotcha. Go fish! This ice soldier is going to go. It looks towards you. It is going to try to strike you, Clifton. Let's go. Makes two martial attacks. The first one goes at you, and the first one misses. It tries to strike you again, trying to kick you. This one hits. Ugh. This will do cold damage, bludgeoning and cold. And I don't have the thing to become immune. No, but you do take 12 reduced down to 9 damage. Ah! Next one that's going to go is the Fear Olger. That one is going to charge and try to take the place fighting, <laughs> yeah. against, fighting against Ignatius. Uh, that one's going to rush towards you. It is going to try to strike you, Ignatius. And it's going to miss with the first one, despite having advantage. It then punches at you again. That one hits. This is going to be bludgeoning and fire damage. It strikes. Nine reduced down to three damage. All right, this ice soldier is going to go. This one, this one is going to rush, push a pew out of the way as it rushes towards you, and it's going to make uh, both of its attacks against Ignatius as well. It strikes. The first one hits. This is going to be bludgeoning and cold as it hits you. I will hellish rebuke. 
<laughs> okay, go for it. You reduce it down to five damage as you hit it. It fails! This is your... This is one of your planar legacy abilities, I believe, right? Yeah. So it's that third level. Go ahead. You burn it. It takes 17 points of damage as it hits you. It ignites into flame. Fighting through it, it tries to strike you one more time. And that hits. It strikes you again. And as it does, you resist it down to five. Um... It is going to, because it hit you with both of those attacks, use its elemental blitz. As it strikes you, you see part of its arm opens up, and just this ray of cold energy erupts from it. You're going to have to make a con save, Mr. Barbarian. <gasps> which, uh, you succeed, Mr. Barbarian. You're going to take half of 3d12 cold damage. You take another 10 points of damage, 21 reduced down to 10. And the final soldier is going to go. It is going to wildly strike at the space where something hit it. <laughs> it is going to have disadvantage, though. It misses the first one against Constance, and it goes for another one. It does hit this one, but only because it dropped a crit. <gasps> oh. oh! So Constance, bludgeoning and lightning damage are coming at you. Oh. Do you oh, no. want to use uh, ignition resistance? <gasps> Twinsies! Yeah. All right. You oh. should. You have an effect for it. Uh, go ahead and apply it, and then take off one of your uses. I'm going to find it. here. It is. Take. Um, put it on myself. How do I do uh, this? Uh, yeah. Just click it. It should work. Oh, just click the little the little disc. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I take. Ah. Oh. I think that did went I do on it, you. Did I do it right? Did it go on to you? I think it went on I to don't, you. I don't, I don't know. I, um, I'm checking. Uh, no, actually. Sorry, uh, just drag it onto yourself then. Okay. Eh. Alrighty. Yeah. It's gonna go for that attack. It tries to strike you. Uh, as it does, the lightning damage is reduced. Uh, eight down to six. Uh, well, it's, you're immune. Uh, eight down to six, it only did two. Back up to the top, it is now your turn. Again, Constance, Lorelai, you're on deck. Oh. Well, I'm, 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 do I'm doing a good job with this boil right here, so we're not, we're not gonna stop a good thing. We are going to, we are, we, we are going to hit it with that scimitar of speed again. Alrighty. We're gonna go blip. That's a hit. And that means blip. You strike it, that's enough to destroy nice. this one. Hey. And then uh let's see, so cunning what's cunning at? Uh That's the thing that lets you do bonus action, disengage and dash oh, and stuff. Oh that's what that does. Okay. Um <laughs> I was looking at Zephyr's Strike, but I don't know if I could use this in a way. Um... Would Zephyr Strike be useful in this instance if I try to also move? Well, you wouldn't be able to bonus action attack if you did that, which means you wouldn't be able to sneak attack this turn. Um... And you you can make it to almost any of them anyway. Mm. Um. If I move right around here, would I be able to get sneak attack on this boy? You're invisible, so you get sneak attack no matter what. You have advantage, oh. and as long as there's an ally within five feet of your target, then you get it. Um, you mm. meet both of those conditions. Okay. Well, we'll move over here, and then, and we will do a sneak attack. Uh, well, you try to hit him first. Yeah. Should I... Eh. <laughs> eh. Yep, that hits. You can choose to sneak attack if you wish to. Uh, we will try to do a uh, freezing razor at create opening. Alrighty, so that takes uh, 1d6. So we're going to have you roll your damage. Um, so this time do the 3d6. Uh, let me find sneak attack again. One second. 
uh, what? Eh. Wait. Alrighty. And then do the save. Or no, first the first. Damage save. first. Eh. Uh, eh. You deal 26 oh. points of damage to it. Uh, now do the save. Okay, do the save. Now it's the save. Oh god, where did it go? Here it is. Eh. It succeeds, I'm afraid. God damn it. <laughs> we'll right, get well, it one of these me. days. That's me. Alrighty. Lorelei. Ignatius, you're on deck. Alright. Um... I'm gonna reach out to this guy who's in front of me and cast Chill, chill Touch. Alrighty. Oh, he's cold. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I pause. I and make him think. even colder. <laughs> oh, no. Does Chill Touch do cold or necrotic? Yeah, I was gonna oh, say. Uh, you would oh. be surprised to know it is not a cold. Yeah. Then it's fine. I, I touch it. All right. <laughs> Roll the thing and then chill touch. Don't even summon us back around. You just boop them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. On the end. That is a ranged attack. You would have had oh, no. disadvantage because oh. there's an enemy within five feet of you. Well, then I super miss. Uh, well, roll it again. Okay. We don't know if you missed. Oh. Nope, you hit. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. These guys are mooks. You strike, oh, wow. you deal four <laughs> points of damage. Oh, Lorelai. I'm helping! You're having a rough time to fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn! Ignatius, Callus, you're on deck. You mm -hmm. two should make like the trees in my yard and split. <laughs> oh, it's so cool! Reckless attack! <laughs> this is why he's our vice leader. <laughs> That's a crit. Oh! So cool. Split indeed. Chopping wood. That In one is twain. <laughs> like that. Like like how I just said just now from the thing. Die. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hit. That one is oh! also dead. Oh! Nice. I... <laughs> I move here. <laughs> Lorelai lets go of half the body that she was chill touching. <laughs> Alright, is that you, Ignatius? Looking a little oaky there, friend. Yeah. Callus. Okay. Um. What to do? Uh. There's only one of them left. Um. I'm a heckin' move. Ever so cautiously, and I'm gonna try to stay up with my rapier. And... Yeah, that is a miss. Oh, oh no! I'll, I'll move my move my spiritual weapon over and see if that does any better. Gotcha. Um, yeah. <laughs> again, yeah. Come on, Callus, just believe in yourself. He misses. Uh, more, more than that. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> and you're not uh, believing that's, enough. That's his turn. Clifton, Constance, you're on deck. I will go for some longsword attacks. Hiya. You strike. That's a hit. Yeah. Now, this is a cold boy. I'm guessing the cold doesn't do anything yet. Uh, you deal seven <laughs> points of damage. Oh. Cold does maybe a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Hmm. <laughs> hey yeah. That's a hit. Hey yeah. Ho -ho! Oh! And it is destroyed. Did he believe? All right. Thanks for the opening, Callus. Uh, Good job, Callus. Sure. <laughs> Just rubs the back of his neck. <laughs> uh, oh. Uh. Anyways, you've been saved. 
Yeah. Hey, you okay? Oh, you, thanks. Sorry our friend hit you with that apple. None of us threw up! What? I didn't. Uh, they hit the. Yeah, it's just fine. Could you untie me? Uh, she's just, yeah! She's just making her way already there. It's like they've got that <laughs> they last one. They start already. untying <laughs> themselves. <laughs> oh, uh, all that right. Hey, so you guys, you must be the. You must be the Crystal Hunters, right? Tis we. Oh, that's cool. Wait, yeah, that's... I. Did you I see the pose? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And you weren't going to say anything. My back's starting to hurt. As you untie him, uh, I am going to, at this point, say if we're going to take a break anywhere today, this is going to be where. Okay. We're going to take a break here. <laughs> All right. Oh. This is I fun. <laughs> this is very fun. I love <laughs> all these boys. I love you all so much. <laughs> we're going to take a, a quick old break, and then we're going to come back. Heck in uh, five, maybe ten minutes. <laughs> all right. Sustains <laughs> little doodles. I might throw up. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, wait, no, hold on. What? I got to see yeah. this. It's, it's in uh, call chat. Call chat. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll be right back. My face, my face hurts. I love this game so much. <laughs> Fucking love D and D. I know how you move. <laughs> or thirty eight damage. I said they were called Cosmic Gala, but they're actually called Cosmic Crisp. <laughs> wow. Also, I have okay. eaten it's three. A I have eaten three apples already. <laughs> oh my god, please don't vomit for real, for real. <laughs> I don't think I could get through, like, one and a half. This, I, uh, this is my second Cosmic Crisp, and the and I've had two Cosmic Crisps and a Granny Smith. Oh, Granny Smith are good, though. So, I haven't played a Sword Saint before. But after I got hit with all that damage, I remembered I could Falcon Wing Deflection uh, <laughs> and reduce the damage. I just, I did, I forgot Have you about used it. a style point in this game? I have not used any style points. I've used two focus points. Or rather, uh, focus to, points. <laughs> to do oh severance. man, wow. <laughs> I did, I did a severance on, oh. on the big boy and I made him to where he, he missed one attack, <laughs> which was oh, yeah. good. <laughs> Hi, chat. I didn't realize how JoJo this was going to come across, but <laughs> I, I'm really not mad about it. I'm trying my hardest not to Nova. <laughs> I have more. I have more that's apples. fair. I have, like, that's what I, I, I was kind of doing that, and then I realized I need to save some spells. Like, I, so I was just like, I gotta stab something. <laughs> like... Oh, Dawn, I'm glad you like I'm glad you like Lorelai. Hmm. Lorelai's a sweetie. She's something. <laughs> I'm I'm love everyone. Can we all hold hands? I'm, I'm I just sure love I just do. love Constance is just like just like always pulling out an apple and eating. I'm just imagining while we're talking to the new tiefling boy, there's just a floating apple just getting bites taken out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know it I know it probably is not supposed to be that way because you know anything they're touching I think is also invisible, but I wanna <laughs> believe it's that way. <laughs> you just see like an apple appear roll on the floor and then disappear again and then <laughs> my goodness I I, I, I love, love everybody everybody is so fun yeah I <laughs> Aaron <laughs> I don't he's not here oh. I'm literally oh, no. just like he's the leader <laughs> he's the red one <laughs> that's, that's, that's perfect anyway I it's everything I wish thought to, it could be, and more. Wish to hug the shy boy. Oh, uh -huh. I. I also you. wish to hug he, the shy boy. He needs one. That's the love of my life. He needs right to there. believe Always. in himself. He constantly needs one. Believe in yourself, Callus. I believe in you, or like whatever. <laughs> believe in me, unicorn boy, who believes in you. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe 
Is this I also... what Izzy went through with fucking whatever his face was? Two fucking spell slots. Yeah, that's that's warlocks, what man. Is this? That, that's a... What is I have, this? I have three right now with um uh with uh, Nemric, but it's 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 very similar. <laughs> Wild. Wow. I've returned. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Talking about spell Make slots. Make with invocations and stuff. Yeah. I see. I, and the I fact used, that your freaking your freaking boy can can casually fucking slam his way through life. <laughs> yeah, I used all my invocations for one thing and one thing only. John <laughs> Paul. Big. So like I said earlier, I definitely heard Sean Paul when you first said it. Mm. I was like. I just want you to run that by me again. I, the entire the entire time I've been I've been imagining it's Jean like Jean Paul like Jean. Well, that's that's what I've been saying. But it's, oh, okay. it's, it's John Paul. Now it's John Paul. Jean Paul. Mm -hmm. Oh, they want to grip knots. Like hold hands. Is there, is there is there is there ungloved knuck gripping going on around here? Oh. I was. I was thinking about it, but now I'm a little nervy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got a skill for that. Why do those two get so weird whenever Arkale's around? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't. You get weird whenever he's around. He's well, because I, I have to be on. I have to be. I have to be ready for him in case he turns his back on us again. He's one cryptic motherfucker. Because I, <laughs> I still haven't forgiven him for that first encounter. <laughs> I hate to see him leave, but I love to see him go. <laughs> Ow! But then when we were both captured by Krita that one time, he's the reason I found Frostbrand, wow. so it's hard. <laughs> bark! 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 <laughs> Lorelai and fucking Constance fucking... <laughs> Lara, Lari, 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 Lari. Uh-huh. Do you want to see my dingaling? ling 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 on your head. The bell on her head. Puts hands up to it. Flicks the bell. Man. I guess you could say he rings your bell. I want to know more about that fucker. Why would he do that? Also, uh, why do you have a bell when you have to sneak around all the time? It's not. It just shows how good they're at sneaking. It never makes a sound. I'm. Uh, I was I'm, making the. You ready to go? Sword. I'm gonna jump back in if you guys are. Right? <laughs> okay. Bye, okay. Bye, <laughs> bye. Okay. I'm just gonna refill my drink real quick. I'm just gonna pour stuff into this glass. Here, a little bit, a little bit of glass pour. I still have I'm a good. little bit of our GG sup. Yeah. I drink all my coffee. Oh, I've been it's vibing on warm. that stuff. It's great. It's warm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine ah. it's quite as good warm. All right. It's really sweet. <laughs> Let's jump back in. Whoa! <laughs> it was unnecessary. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be. It was great. <laughs> All right. As you guys go back in, you, uh, Constance, could you roll me an investigation check? Yes, I can. Hold on. Let me get to the tab. Here it is. Wow, that's low. Wow, that's low. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so you don't really Skipping notice. Beginning of vestige dwarf flashbacks. You you undo the uh, <laughs> you undo the remains of the binds on the kid. This uh, how like tiefling who again has this just pure white skin, white horns, almost featureless. They're almost like a like a blank tiefling. Um, relatively innocent look on their face. They couldn't be more than 13, 14 years old. Uh, as they stand, they. They look to you. They're probably at about the same height as you. We didn't really talk heights, but I would imagine <laughs> they're, you're not incredibly tall. Mm. Uh, as they stand, they, they look to the group as a whole. You guys didn't have to come and get me. Thanks so much. Um, I was actually trying to find you. What for? Why? As expected. Oh, well. Why? <laughs> I heard that there were more like me in Celis Field, so I thought that if I came to you, maybe you could help me out with trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do, because 
I've never seen another person like me before. Mm. <sighs> it's a bit of a rarity. Yeah, what I don't understand is why you were kidnapped, tied here, and then just left when you're supposed to be the key. Air quotes. Mm. Well, clearly the door must be nearby. Well, I mean, I guess the point was always just to get you away from the town, right? As they say that, you just hear oh, no. this dramatic... <laughs> As you see a dark shadow come down and land on top of the statue of Amir. Uh, that is in front of you as uh, Krita's wyvern spreads its wings, lets out this reptilian roar as he stands on the back of it. Way to bury the lead there. That's fine. Oh, you see him struggle slightly as the wyvern kicks back and he almost loses balance, but he maintains it. <sighs> you have outdone yourself. Truly. I could not be more pleased. And I am feeling generous today, Crystal Hunters. Let's say if you live, after what comes next, you can keep this child. He's outlived his usefulness to Hygax regardless. After all, he was never what he really seemed to be. <laughs> As he says this, you see the, the Howlite Tiefling's eyes sharpen and their form begins to contort. Revealing the pale skin of what you would know to be a doppelganger as you hear this muffled laughter coming from them as well. Distorted, uh, beginning to, instead of coming from it, emanate from the inside of all of your heads. We're going to use the same initiatives. Oh. As we're going right back into <laughs> battle. Are you sure? <laughs> As you see the, the, the kid's form rise up, Constance. Actually, you know what? Yeah, go ahead and re-roll them. Just for, just for fun. And takes on the bluish humanoid blank form of this. Would her invisibility have ended also? Ah, damn it. <laughs> uh, I'd say given the time taken to unbind him, yes. Mm. Okay. Could you take that off of her? Yeah. Cool. <gasps> yeah. Oh, man. I'm gonna take my rage off. I feel like it's been more than a minute. Alrighty. I unfortunately do not have a token for Krita. I could only get oh. so much done. Oh, I didn't want to work to see de to death. Wearing a mask, I see. Krita can't even face us yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Callus, your turn is first, uh, followed by uh, Lorelai, you are on deck. I am going to... Um, yeah, why not? I'm going to cast uh, Fairy Fire on a lot of them. All right. Oh. So heckin'... Um... Ow. The doppelganger you just gotta succeeds. <laughs> Alrighty. That's neat. I like that. And uh, how long does the spiritual weapon last again? Uh, let me check. One minute. They would also be gone. Yeah. Dang it. I'm sorry. It's your fault somehow. <laughs> it's, uh, I did this. <laughs> We have to run up the runtime somehow. You would only apologize <laughs> if it was. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess I'll leave it at that for now. I want to blow my whole my whole spell load just yet. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll be me. Alrighty. Krita and his wyvern go next. The wyvern will lift off, and it will come down to land at the center of the group. Krita is considered to occupy all of its spaces at once. He will occupy whatever space is the most convenient for him at a given time. Uh, as he lands, he is going to go first. He raises up the great axe uh, that he carries on him. I need to real quick. Alrighty. Ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-
A baby de bell. Checking the thing. Uh, he is going to go ahead, and as he lands, he is going. He's just going to go for attacks. He's going to do some attacks. Uh, he is going to land Lorelei and Clifton. He is going to make an attack on each of you. Oh. Uh, can I use Falcon Wing Deflection? Uh, I will use Falcon Wing Deflection. <laughs> yes, yes, you may. I actually, I need to recode him real quick. One sec. Something on his sheet coded weird. Give me just a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. Where are you? Um, ba -ba -dum. Oh, there's just a space there. That's why. Fixed. Put you back at 18. Okay, so Falcon Wing Deflection, as he goes to attack, you will do yours first. Uh, you bring up your blade, try to deflect the attack as he hits. He is going to swing, and... Because of the Falcon Wing Deflection, he misses. Yay! Uh-oh. And he's going to go for an attack on yeah, you, you, Lorelai. As he strikes, that is a 23, and that hits. <laughs> as he hits, you take... 16 points of damage. Ouch. The wyvern is then going to go. The wyvern oh, is shit. going to make two attacks. It's going to make a bite. The bite is going to be against Lorelei. Snaps shit. at you. No. That misses. It is then oh. going to make a stinger oh. attack against Clifton. Uh-oh. Its like barbed tail strikes towards you. <laughs> and it hits. Son of a bitch. <laughs> you take 14 points of poison or piercing damage and you need to make a con save. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't want to. Come on, roll one. No. And as you have failed, you're no. going to take 76 poison damage. <laughs> oh, fuck. okay, good. You take 23 points of damage. That's, that's better than what it could have been. <laughs> it is then going to take off with him on it. It's going to move up and out of your ranges. Uh, it, is it? I can't do anything. Is that an opportunity attack or no? Yeah, if you yeah. want to. Yep. I, I already uh, used my reaction though. I will say, because of a feature he has, uh, he does not provoke opportunity attacks. However, the wyvern does. It's I, also technically not I... his movement. It's the wyvern's. Can I hit it with my crossbow? Uh, no, it has to be a melee weapon. Okay, sickle it is. Bia! No! I miss. Dang it. Alrighty. Uh, that is a miss, I'm afraid. Is that you? Yeah. Alright, they are both but it's 20. Not. They're both 20 <laughs> feet in the air. My turn! It is your turn. Ignatius, you're up next. It's time to make that wyvern a divern. Now I'm opposed, and John oh, Paul is gonna phase in for a uh, phase from behind me, and another huge John Paul. Here he comes. Did so, I have an effect on them for fairy fire? I don't think you did. Um, uh, let me do that now. Lorelai, make another sickle attack against him. You would have had advantage. Oh, okay. Now, unfortunately, uh, yeah, so you can summon John Paul again because oh. you took a short rest. So let's bring him out. Where is he? Oh, I'll just drop it on him. Doesn't matter. I hear. Where are you? His advantage. Yeah. So yeah, go, go ahead, ahead and go ahead and roll damage against him for that one. Are y'all ready for this? Warlock zero. Of course it is zero. John Paul. Alrighty. I don't know why every time I put John Paul in there, it's like HP adjust, negative 45. Weird. Is Kreeton on the combat tracker? Oh, I didn't make him visible again. Sorry. There he is. Okay. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, it didn't put the right token on him either. <gasps> One sec. I'm going to fix that. 
I want to give him the I want to give him the right token. Yes. Oh no! It did zero damage. Ah uh, yeah, I have negative strength, BB. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I'm a, I'm a fucking warlock. If you didn't know, I've got two spell slots and noodle arms. Having oh. bad damage is not inherently a warlock thing. Um, I, I I am. Yeah. Oops! I made the doppelganger into a Myrmidon. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a strange sentence I just Judas. said. Judas! Jean Paul, why? Judas Paul! Jean Paul! Pourquoi? Je ne comprends pas! There. He's back to normal. And Jean Paul is going to appear. And I'd uh, like him to be huge. Of course if I you can. would. Yes, you can. Of course you can. <gasps> Yay! He's a big boy. <laughs> He's a big, big. He's a growing boy. <laughs> there he, he is. His initiative Jean -Paul! gets... Jean-Paul! Alrighty. That is your action to conjure him. Get him! And can he attack on his turn? Or on our turn? Uh, it takes your action to make him attack. Ah... I don't have any bonus action things, so I think You can get him next my... to him, though. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you can move. Whoosh. <laughs> 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 if you want to go over there, you can. <laughs> yeah. Here's flies up towards them. Is that you? Yeah. Alrighty. Ignatius! I knew you were bad. I hate kids. I'm gonna read yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, I mean, don't don't fix what ain't broke, right? Rage. <laughs> Rage! <laughs> you attack. That's a hit. You deal 17 points of damage to the doppelganger. Take a sec. That's another hit. That one is only 8 points of damage. One second, it's a little dull. <laughs> yeah. You see the doppelganger foil back as you're hit by it. Uh, there's a almost like plastic stretching noise as it seems to tense its hands and form fists. There's just a... Oh, that's gross. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> yeah. Constance, Clifton, you're on deck. Yeah. Um. I am going to. It's so weird because it's just like I'm always like spell. You're so used to money. <laughs> 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 yeah, the no, simplicity no. of just wailing on a thing. It, yeah, it, it's a thing of like, why do I feel like all I do is hit it with the thing? Oh, that's all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, since I'm raging within five feet of them, all, all melee attacks against them have advantage right now. Yes. Yeah. Um. You have, so you have advantage if you attack them. Yeah, I will. I will do the the the, the bia with this with which matter. Alrighty. I will do. I will do the bia. You do have advantage, so roll it again, just to see oh. if you crit. Eh. Uh, oops, I fucked up. Eh. No. Okay, so you don't crit, but you do hit, and you can use sneak attack because you have an ally within five feet. Ah, uh, because that's been working so well so far. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, you gonna get it. Fuck it, let's try it. Let's do create opening again. That <laughs> means I lose one d6 and it's the, the, the... Hold on, don't, I know how to do this. Okay. It's what the 3d6. The create d6. opening do? It's mm -hmm. the 3d6. Create opening makes it so that they have to So that the first this. attack on each turn that's made against them has advantage. Yeah. That if it hits. Well. Okay, I put it on me. And then I, I hit it with the slashing. Mm-hmm. I hit you. And you deal 19 points of damage. Now, make him make his save. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> it succeeds. Oh, you, have, you have a good DC. That's the upsetting thing. Everything's <laughs> rolling real well. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Well, I'm just gonna hit it again. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna be all. You have advantage. Burr, 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 burr. Roll again. Just see if you oh, can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is why mm. the scimitar speed's so freaking good. Yep, okay, you hit, so roll more damage. Wah. You deal minimum, so you deal seven. Ah. What an effect yeah. for that. Can you do, like, grant ADV, ADK, um, melee? Is that possible? Uh, good. Uh, I, I don't use the aura extension anymore, because it, oh, okay. it weirds out, so... We'd have to just remember. Just right, I'm just keeping yeah. that in mind. Yeah, as long as we're moving people. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, is that I you, think... Constance? Yeah, that is me. Alright, Doppelganger's turn. Then Clifton. Doppelganger's going to go. It is going to make, try to make two slam attacks. Uh, it is and one against each of you. It pulls back its hand. It tries to punch Ignatius. And it, as soon as it registers, it crits. Oh no. Ooh. It punches, dealing. Oh boy. Five. Ow. <laughs> Oofies. It then turns and it tries to strike Constance. Can and I it nat one. Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what are you going to try to do? Just I was, gonna, I was gonna do uncanny dodge. Uh, you only have to say you do that after you know it hits. Okay, well. Yeah. But it misses. <laughs> you you dodge away from it, demoralized by trying to have hit Ignatius. Uh, it doesn't put everything into it and doesn't hit you. Clifton, your turn. Uh, so I can get on. So so we can we can we can stand on Jean Paul. He's not like ethereal, right? Uh, well, he's fifteen feet in the air currently. Uh, but... I'd like to misty step on top of Jean Paul. <laughs> <gasps> he is made of pure energy. Oh, well, you have. I was just wondering because you had us be on him before. I was like, out of combat. That's fine. That's fine. He is, he is made of, I... though he seems solid. He is made of pure energy. Could I try to misty step on top of the wyvern? Yeah, you'd have to probably make a check to try to grab onto it, though. Perfect. I want to do that. <laughs> All right, who's going to give up one of your attacks? I need you to try to grapple it. Ba, 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 ba. I... Where is... There it is. Uh, this is uh, athletics? Yep. Or is it just... Uh... Hi-ya! Ah, oh, damn it. You succeed by one. Oh, yeah! <laughs> you use your bonus act and use Misty Step. You appear in a flash of light up above it. You grab onto it. You are now also riding the Wyvern, which does not care for that. Um, <laughs> that would have taken one of your attacks. That's perfectly fine. I will then turn to Krita, and I'm going to just raise up my freaking Frostbrand. Just like, let's go! <laughs> All right, I go for it. First attack. Oh, no, not second attack, technically. You know, hi-ya. So, you do hit, however, he's going to use his reaction to mm -hmm. to use a feature called Clouded Mind. You're going to make a wisdom save. Oh no! Uh, can I use my reaction to give myself uh, extra with my thingy? With what? Uh, with uh, Crystal Clarity. Um, I did roll Let's it without... Let's add a d6 to my, to my thing. Normally no, but I did roll it without waiting for you to say so, so yeah, go ahead. Go. If it makes the difference, then you succeed. Plus it five? makes the difference. For a second, yeah. he uses a feature that literally causes your mind to wander in such a way that you forget that he's even there. But you, having faced it before, focus, and you uh, maintain concentration. Go ahead and roll your damage. That won't work again, Krita! <laughs> you deal eight points of damage to them. It's time for a dragon surge. <laughs> All right. Do, do. Next attack! That hits. Hiya! You deal another 12 points of damage. Next attack! And that hits. Hiya! And you deal finally 16 more points of damage. It's time for another dragon surge. No, it's not. <laughs> oh. That's not how they work. You can only use one per turn. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm sure you do. All right, is well, that your I, turn? Otherwise, Vogan would do it, like, like all the time as yep. well, so. Is that you? Uh, that is... Mm, yes, it is me. Okay. 
Ba boom. Callus, it is your turn. Oh. Lorelai, you're on deck. Okay. okay, they're really high up. Um, it's true they <laughs> are. Ooh. Ooh. You got this. Um. Pretty sure Divine Strike only works on melee weapons, right? Um. You have your spiritual quaff in. I do not, because it disappeared. <gasps> it's been more than a minute. <laughs> Shuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't help you anymore. Um, I mean, I guess I could just make another one. Uh, I will make one at, uh, third level, because why not? Alrighty. It's his favorite, it's his favorite spell, apparently. <laughs> Heckin... Uh, uh, get you. I'm gonna get you, Wyvern. Oh, I'm. Uh, uh, that's. Mm, you're up there now. I can't do the thing I wanted to do. Whatever. Uh, I'll just hit the boy. <laughs> I wanted to heal a boy, but now he's up there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I can. Bill. Callus. That hits. Callus. Oh. Oh. It, oh! Yay! <laughs> no! Your spiritual weapon deals 15 points of damage as it soars up towards it and strikes into the wyvern's chest. Um, is there any action things I would like to do? Um, I think... Uh, I'm pretty sure I can only use this once per long rest. Uh... Oh no, it's it's per short rest. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at the Wyvern, and I'm going to use Hidden Potential to make it a third level spell. Okay. And I cannot find my spells. Oh. Where is my little spell? <laughs> Here it comes. Yo, that is a hit. Hell yep, and take that. You deal nineteen more Ooh. points of damage to the wyvern. Nice. Which already has fairy fire on it, so there's not a lot of point in. Yeah. Yeah. Like an... Nice. All right. And that's Thanks. still just because I think I understand it. It does only consume a first level spell slot to do it that way, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Hidden Potential, the Crystal Tiefling Frame, allows you to uh, cast a spell as, I believe it is, it cast a spell as if it were at a level equal to your proficiency bonus. Was that what it was? Uh, I, I believe effect? so. Let me, I just clicked it off so it's not on my sheet anymore. It's fine. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's that once per short rest. So, yeah. you're good. Is that, and that's your turn. Krita and his wyvern. He looks towards you, Clifton. Your naivete is losing its charm. Clifton. He raises up his axe, and he's going to strike towards you. Oh my lord, what a good time for him to be a sass master. He, he crits. Goodbye! Oh, Goodbye, no! Goodbye, everyone! Clifton! <laughs> he strikes! Clifton! No! You are struck from the wyvern, <sighs> and you fall. Uh, can I try to catch him? Roll me an athletics check. Oh boy, okay. Oh boy. Can't believe I'm, I'm gonna die by getting drunk. squished. <laughs> you know, I damn well might. All right, here, athletics, you say? Yes. Okay. Oh no. Oh! You oh, do okay. it as he falls. I'll say that you catch him. You prevent him from hitting the ground and suffering a death save failure. <sighs> nice catch. Okay, that happens. <laughs> Krita and the wyvern. Why are you not? Bound to the map. Whatever. <gasps> They're leaving Jean Paul's range! Do I have a thing clicked I don't mean to have clicked? It's weird. They're not obeying the map. How strange. <laughs> Villains. Well, we're getting real Obey abstract the about the map. Uh, as they, they as, rules. as they move <laughs> Yeah. Callus. Oh. Krita jumps off of the wyvern, which also comes down to land beside you. He lands behind you. <sighs> 
And your magics are also losing their charm, Callus. Pity. You and I could not be more similar, and yet we are so different. He's going to raise up his axe and he's going to strike towards you. He did, and he misses. Yay! <sighs> The Wyvern is then going to make both of their attacks against you, Callus. Oh no! You have proven to be the most dangerous in regards to effects. <laughs> the Wyvern misses the bite as you scramble away. It's going to make a stinger attack. <laughs> and it. That hits. Oh no! no! <laughs> Strikes. You take nine points of damage, <laughs> and you unfortunately fail your concentration oh. check. You now need to make a con save. Oh no! Come on, Callus! But you fail. Callus, you take 32 points of poison damage from the stinger on the wyvern. Which is now floating just about five feet above the ground. Oh, no. Lorelei, it is your turn. I drop Clifton. <laughs> 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 he takes a death save. <laughs> no! You bastard! And I'm a, I'm a run. Oh, forward. PG thirteen show. Oh my god! Oh, sorry, you, you, you bully. There you go. Um, Ignatius said ass like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> I think we're fine. Yeah, one an I episode. Also, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm gonna run forward, throw myself at the wyvern, and I'm going to start screams of pandemonium. <laughs> John Paul, like, all right, I'll just be up here. <laughs> I'm so, sorry, John Paul. reminder that that doesn't work well when, like, it affects everything oh, around groups. you. That's yeah. true. Okay, you hold can go on. around the other I side. I don't do that. I don't. John Paul, get him! I forget that I'm not a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> We're being super abstract about token placement right now. It's fine. Yeah. Who cares? We, yeah. And Let's get wild. Um. Heck. So his elemental vor vortex is twenty feet. I don't want to catch any of my friends in that. Is that is that a no fly? Are we on the no fly no, right he, now? No, he could catch the the wyvern in it from where he is. All right. Can I move to where I can get uh, the wyvern and Krita? Uh, like, like... that would be difficult because he's in the same plane as Callus. But yeah, technically you mm. could you could maneuver in such a way that if you go, let me move the thing on the map. Let me, let me do I would it. like to do that then. You could effectively get to there and get him just on the edge of it if you want to. Yeah. All right, he gets one of them. Uh, he gets over to there. Elemental energies begin surging around him. This blast of lightning erupts from him as his body becomes a vortex of energy. Make them both make the save, please. All right. Here I go. Okay. I can do that. I know how to do that. I'm it's doing on, it. It's on his sheet. Oh, yes. But I can okay. make them. Yes. I'll, I'll just make them do it from where I am. Okay. It's easier this way. They both succeed, so they both take half. Shit. Ah. This is fine. Biaw! They both take... Uh, so... It <clears throat> didn't properly code that they would take half, because... I'm the one that rolled the save, and then you rolled the damage. So, ah. it didn't code properly. So I'm gonna give them both back ten hit points. Okay. 55... All right, bam. However, they will both take 10 damage. Does that count as both of my attacks? It is the action to do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my turn then. All righty. The storm of energy okay. then reforms back into its native form. It is, that was his turn. Ignatius! Help! Uh, Ignatius is going to... Reckless attack. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Go ahead. That's a hit. You deal another 10 points of damage to the doppelganger, which is looking pretty beat up at this point. Ah, uh, 
will take another swing. That's another hit. Double. You deal Double. 15 points of damage. Uh, and... How can we help people? Um... I think I'll leave this one to you. He's going to step to the side, and he's going to activate Lord of Brass. Uh, it is, yeah. Heck in. Bonus action activate? Uh, I believe it's a, hold on. Oh, it's an action? No, I can't. It's an action, yeah. Uh, never mind. Uh, then I will. No, I'll stay. Uh, I changed uh, my I'll... mind. Never mind, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that would take too long. Stay we only on. get one of those an episode. I'll just kill you. <laughs> Constance, I'm, uh, I'm coming, but later. Your turn. <laughs> Get him, Constance. Anna. Constance. Are you on mute? Sorry. There you are. <laughs> I'm on mute. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Big we, still, we still got to deal with this boy, yo, so I'm going to hit him with a bia. Mm-hmm. What? You would have advantage because he's raging next to it. It makes me do it twice. <laughs> you hit. You hit. <laughs> Why? I don't understand what's so funny. Just the distress. <laughs> I just wanted to die before, before Cliff dies. You're done. Oh, you got it. <laughs> And he saved your sneak attack, so you can go bonk them. I'm gonna go for, And then I'm gonna bonk the dragon! <laughs> Do it! Bonk the dragon! <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta roll it twice! You don't gotta roll it twice, you don't, don't, you don't have advantage this time! Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You do hit! You do hit! No. <laughs> I love your response. <laughs> I'm not doing the sneak attack. It never fucking works. You, I'm just hitting. You can just do regular sneak attack to do yeah, your I'll, I'll damage. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, I put the four D. I on I me. hold that you have a good DC and it it, it should work against things. <laughs> it's just been rolling really the well. The dice have just not liked you currently. You have to believe in yourself. No. <laughs> See, she gets it. You deal 22 points of damage to the wyvern. Okay, that's me. Uh, Clifton, roll me a death save. Hey, what's up? Let's go. Oh, hi. 20. You 20. 20, you little. Fuck. Isn't Callus before me? Oh, no, he's right after me. Because yeah. he couldn't heal me last turn. Yeah. You fail. Let's go. Oh, oh. 20, you baka. Callus. <laughs> Buck. Fucking, I'm a... Uh... Oh, man. What to do? What to do? I'm a heckin'... Uh... I'm gonna take a chance. Actually, I don't need to. I have healing work. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna use healing work. Don't roll it onto him. Roll it just into the chat. Okay. I can. Uh, I gotta be on. I'm not targeting anybody right now. For. The Wyvern, so untarget that boy. And. And healing. Uh, do I want to do it at third level or first level? Uh, I'll do it at first level. What are, what are Callus's healing words? Ah, wake up! <laughs> <laughs> As you do this, Krita reaches over to you and they put their hand out in the direction of what you're casting. They're going to use the Obsidian Tiefling ability <gasps> Inverse Rejuvenation as a reaction to negate the healing and instead Can cause them to that? take half of what they would have healed as damage. Oh no! No! Makes him ah! fail a death save. What the heck? 
Could you mark another well, failed death save, please, Clifton? I did. I did. Well, I'm gonna... Fighting now I'm gonna against, do what I was... Fighting against the power of the negative plane of energy is foolish, Gallus. But go ahead. Keep trying. I want to do what I said I was going to do before that. I'm going <laughs> to take a chance. As you move away, he's going to attack you. Okay. Oh, no, he can't. He just uses his reaction. Never mind. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah get hecked. Uh, you hecked so <laughs> what that was was very much him looking at him and just being smug and just being like, You cannot fight against the power of the negative energy plane, Callus. Where did you go? <laughs> He's like, look to the side. You're not there. He just has no presence. <laughs> and I'm going uh, to cast a second level uh, healing word, or not healing word, uh, cure wounds on, okay. on Heck and Clifton. <gasps> That's a mean ability, isn't it? Yeah. It yeah holy crap. It'd be a shame My if gosh. it worked for the entire turn. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh... Clifton, you regain 13 hit points. <laughs> Thanks, Callus. You're welcome. Okay. Good job, Callus. Uh, and that is his turn. Creed up. He's gonna rush towards you, leap into the air. He's gonna bring his great axe down on you. Leave him alone. He hits. Oh no. Oh god. <laughs> you take. Oh, Callus! you're down! Callus! Oh, don't worry. You won't have to think about it for very long. He's then going to move under the wyvern, and Clifton, he's going to go for an attack on you. Arcling deflection! He not once. Yay! Oh. <laughs> but use it anyways. I did. <laughs> boop, boop. Raises up the axe to attack you, and as he does, the wyvern flails in response to Constance attacking it, and the wyvern's foot hits the axe and knocks it off uh, off of its course. The wyvern's then going to go. The wyvern uh -oh. is going to attack Jean Paul. Yeah! <gasps> Jean Paul! Jean Paul can take it! He, goes he ain't for a, no bitch! Was there a bite against Jean Paul? It misses! It then goes for a stinger attack against Jean Paul. Which hits. Oh. Jean Paul! It rolls two ones. It takes six damage. Jean Paul needs to make a con save. No! Jean Paul fails. Jean Paul! <laughs> Jean Paul takes 22 points of damage. No. Of poison damage. Poison the wind. Poison the wind. Chopping wind. Chopping wind. Look, as it does. <laughs> Lorelei, it is now your turn. Um, okay. And it's it's my action for Jean Paul to attack. Yes. Oh, I'm torn. I'm a, you know what? I'm gonna take care of the wyvern. You're more of a fucking person. Oh, it should have had advantage against Clifton. Oh, well, whatever. I'm gonna. I'm going to go after Jean Paul, and Jean Paul's going to take his two slam attacks. Alrighty. You want? Yeah. Uh, yeah there you go. And that first one hits. Yeah. Reels back, strikes. Wyvern takes 19 points of lightning damage. One more time. That hits. And the wyvern is down. Yes. It dissolves into shadowy energy as it collapses down to the ground and it disappears. You've killed this wyvern at least 20 to 40 times previously over the course of various misadventures. <laughs> uh, you know that this thing returns to whence it came when killed. Yeah. You go away and you tell them that Lorelai's gonna kick their butts too! Even I'm if you're the same still here. stupid wyvern, fuck! <laughs> 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 I just not so much stuff in my lap. Oh, I get it. I am God, still I here. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? I'm gonna try to be, look, look so small. Why would the wyvern despite... tell them I'm still here? Well, I'm gonna send you back too when I <laughs> kick your ass! I'm gonna... <laughs> 
intimidate it a little bit. <laughs> Mitch, it's your turn. Why is Lorelei beeping? <laughs> Usually only Ignatius does that. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> He's just like, Beep. <laughs> nice axe, let me show you mine. <laughs> That's a crit! Yo! Let's go! Uh, before you. Oh. oh uh, <laughs> Uh, you know what? We're past it. You, Great Weapon Master turns a 2 into a 12. Good job. Ooh. Uh, you deal 19 points of damage. <laughs> Go ahead and roll the next one if you want. Uh, one sec, because I crit. I'm going to grievously wound this bitch. Do it. And I have disadvantage on attacks. And the movement is slowed. If that matters for anything. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I, I, I get that, though. <laughs> also die. <laughs> okay. No! Okay. Hold on, though. <laughs> okay. it, it's going to try to use Clouded Mind to try to make you forget that he's there. So you're going to roll a wisdom save. Uh, I'm great at those. You ah! succeed! No! Ah! <laughs> oh, that just didn't work at all. Oh, no. As you strike, you bring the axe down, you hit him, sparks fly, and he is sent careening back as his body begins to fade away into shadow as well, as he begins to be recalled to the negative energy plane. I'm the axe guy around here, Krita. <laughs> That's fine. I never needed to be- You here anyways? You should have been more mindful. Of the giant. As his body vanishes, disappearing in a uh, gust of black energy similar to when you teleport back to the sanctuary. Uh, we defeated him. The giant. Kill us! <laughs> yeah, can't. Constance, it's your I'm... turn. <laughs> oh no. Callus is still on the ground. I... <laughs> I'm going to do... I'm going to do a medicine in the form of shoving an apple in your gullet. Do it. Alrighty. This will probably kill him faster. <laughs> it does, does not succeed. He is now full of apple and dying. <laughs> That's not working. <laughs> I, I need what do you to mean cut. It's not working. I need to cut it. I didn't think about that. Give me a minute. It starts cutting the apple. Clifton. <laughs> Hold on, I got it! I'm gonna- I'm gonna help cut the apple, and by that I mean medicine check! <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You stabilize him. <sighs> and for the purposes of what we're doing today, we'll say he- he's at one hit point. Uh, right, chew. Like chew. Yeah, oh, chew. No. Don't worry, we got the seeds out! <laughs> we did? Right, yeah, we did. Uh, we did. I didn't forget. It's okay. They only have a little bit of poison. It's not enough to kill you. It's, what? it's actually like a spice. It's fine. I'm just glad you're okay. Gosh, creep. <sighs> Thank you. What a jerk. You all hear a ringing in your ears as the unique sending stones that connect you to the deputy mayor uh, begin to go off, as if they've been trying to contact you for a while, and you just hear this distorted high-pitched ring that ends up uh, lowering into Crystals! What happened? I'm told you left the, the town. Gungirok awoke once you left, grew in size and has been drilling down into the middle of the town. I don't know what it's after but it's making progress fast. Oh, man. Arkia, that punk knew this was a trap. He was, it wasn't like he wasn't trying to tell us. He told us not to go, and we didn't. He told us didn't. to kill a child, which honestly, I really should have put more thought into. <laughs> <laughs> but how would he have known anyway? You oh, hear it as a voice from behind you. I know a great many things. That's what, I, that, that's what I was going to say. Like what? Why don't Besides you ever this, say any of them? Ignoring this. What else do you know? I know for one thing that the, he air quotes, planar energies of one tiefling 
would not be enough to accomplish what Hygax wishes for. <laughs> Could have said that. No. Oh, I didn't realize that I was the leader of your little team. I told you I would neither get in your way or assist. No! Galpadon said that it was potentially possible. Uh, it was crucial information, though. In any case, you could sit here and worry about your failure to recognize the trap that you have been subjected to. Or you could be aware that that giant has been imbued with magics allowing it to dig straight down into your crystal sanctuary. Uh, we gotta move. <laughs> I'll help Callus up. Krita is becoming... More clever than I would have given him credit for. I will tell you what. I could have been more forthcoming with my suspicions. If you wish to return quickly, I suppose I could help you out. About time. What's the price? Yeah, that too. No price. I would just hate to see your adventures come to an end. To be outsmarted by Krita seems... Mm, embarrassing. We're in no position to refuse. Uh, fine. Very well. One request. Do not tell anyone what you are about to see. The Academy would not like this. Is it your face? You see them smile. Their pinkish yeah. eye begins to glow slightly more brightly and they put their hand out. You see this arcane circle appear under the lot of you as their robes begin to shift and uh, ruffle. You all begin to glow the various colors that you do whenever you're beginning to teleport. As he is going to cast the very illegal spell teleport. Oh. Yeah! <sighs> We're telling. I'm kidding. <laughs> you all vanish. <laughs> I don't see what's so good about this. <laughs> <laughs> and as you do, as you teleport back to the town readily, for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm going to give you guys another short rest. <gasps> yeah! yeah! We're having My fun. My spell today. slot! Curses. <laughs> I'd like to not be dead. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I still have a little bit of HP. <laughs> I still have so much hit dice. Man, what's it do with some? all these hit dice? Can I have some? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to give you my hit dice. Of course you are. Go ahead. <laughs> Clifton, you're healing less than normal. It's because of all that running you were doing earlier. Uh, yeah, I must have tired, tired myself out. <laughs> uh, I say as I cough up blood. <laughs> here, Callus will go over to you and cast a third level cure wounds on you. Oh, Callus. But Callus, you're still hurt too. Uh, I, he needs it more. Uh, but we need you. I'll be fine. Oh, I haven't vomited yet. Uh, so that's yeah. a win. Apple in your face. <laughs> <laughs> you regain 24 hit points. Thanks, As you Alice. all arrive, the teleportation spell comes to an end, and you are all left uh, in the middle of what was once Town Square, and still technically is, but there is now a 30-foot radius hole sitting in the middle of it. The edges of it seem to have been uh, bored down, and it goes straight down into the earth so far that it descends into fl into nothing but darkness. Um, you would be aware this is probably heading down towards the Crystal Sanctuary. It is straight down. The edges of it uh, are... They seem to be ignited uh, with some of the flame that uh, seems to have bored this hole. And being near it feels similar to what you might consider being near a volcano. As you, rocks. as you arrive, <laughs> uh, in your head you hear the words of Vilthadon. Crystals, 
The fire giant has been granted magic by Hygax that is allowing it to burrow readily through the earth. It will reach the crystal sanctuary in mere minutes. You must return to defend the Terminus Hadron at all costs. All right. Let's go. As you, get, you hear yelling coming from off behind you, and you hear just a frantic, <laughs> Hold on! <laughs> as you see the goblinoid smith friend that you uh, you know well, Dunk here, rushing towards you, carrying what appears to be a very large box, rushing up. <laughs> Hunt, Hunter Red! Uh, sir! Uh, uh, Dunk! Hold on! One moment. Lord. I know you said you'd never use it again, after what it did before, but... When I saw that thing get up, I went to the vault and I've been trying to unbury it. He holds up the box to you. I brought back Jotun Cleaver. But after last time, I don't know if I can. I think you've trained, you've changed. You can control yourself this time. What? We must protect it at all costs. Fine. <gasps> he unlatches it and opens it, revealing this large great axe with this magnificent blood red edge to it. This fine weapon that is functionally, though it's called Jotun Cleaver, uh, is a giant slayer great axe. <gasps> Whoa! I haven't seen you wield that in. However long we've been a group. Ah! <laughs> In the time frame here. <laughs> I don't know where it's going, but this is the closest anything's ever gotten before. You gotta stop it. I will. Is it going in the other eye this time? It's going in both eyes, and out the back of both eyes, and oh. fully around back into the eyes again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, oh okay. gosh. All right. I've heard of overkill, but wow. <laughs> Passing through a third time. <laughs> All right. you, the, you, the teleportation effects of the, of the Crystal Sanctuary take hold. And then a foot. <laughs> <laughs> As you are teleported down once again. As you teleport down to the Crystal Sanctuary, this time I'm giving you guys a map. Oh. You arrive. As you do, you are you enter into the same teleportation circle. Around you the empty cavern looms in the distance. You see the central command hub with the Terminus Hadron sitting in the center of it. You feel a rumbling around you as if a growing earthquake is uh, building. Rocks begin to shudder and fall from the ceilings. You hear in your heads. Quickly, stand before me. Alright. <laughs> Rush. as you rush forward to the central area. The rumbling increases and intensifies. Soon, Gungirok will arrive. You must be ready to use everything in your arsenal to stop it. If it destroys the Hadron, Hygax will be freed from his prison in the negative energy plane. Crystal, we won't let you down. Crystal Hunters, are you ready? Yes. I was born unready, but I'm ready now. <laughs> We're the ready. The ceiling of the cavern suddenly erupts as burning red light fills it. The now gargantuan form of Gungirok, with skin glowing red and hair made of pure fire now, plummets down and lands on the bridge leading to the teleportation circle. 
One moment. Cut click. As it lands, he crashes down and readies himself. It wordlessly, its head lifts, and the now glowing, ignited eye, with a gemstone within it, looks to each of you. Pulls back, he lets out a war cry that causes the area to shudder. I'd like you all to roll initiative for the final conflict of today's session. Let's cleave us out. Well, you know, it's, it's now that I realize I have a specific thing to it give gives me a you bonus advantage on initiative, initiative. Yeah, you always have advantage. Oh, it's not. Oh, is it advantage? Or yeah. is it a plus like D8 or something? It's advantage. Oh. Well, then I guess I'll just roll again. All right. <laughs> Keep in mind, you got an 11, so... You were feeling meek earlier. Oh, well, you still are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Hacken. We are going to begin the final conflict. Clifton. Constance, you're on deck. As I look off toward this boy, I look back to everybody else, and it's like, man, I don't want to go down immediately again. But if this you is as heinous as it looks, I'm going to activate my heart of ice. As you do, as you begin to channel the planar energies within you and prepare to fight, all of you get the sense that this is, in fact, the time to pull out all the stops. Oh... Go ahead and put it on yourself, no! Cody. <laughs> I said I wouldn't, but I will. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I said I wouldn't, but I will! Lion bitch! Woo! Heart of ice! <laughs> uh, that is the wrong one. That is for when you reduce damage. You want the other effect. Oh, the other effect! <laughs> Planar energies begin to coalesce around him. Cover his body as you see ice forms on him like a suit of armor. I need to get it off of me. <laughs> I got it off you. Put on the other one. Okay, thank you. Hey, yeah. Okay, would you like to do anything else with your turn? Uh, I will also activate my sword, uh, and that's gonna be me this turn, as I'm just like looking off toward him, just imagining ice just encompassing everything but the armor of the ble of the breastplate. All right, Constance. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking here. Um. If I pull out all the stops, then I might use my bonus action to activate Zephyr Strike. Okay. Um. Don't know how this works. <laughs> uh, Zephyr Strike. So, if I'm pulling out of the stops for you, would be Skyborne. But, um. Mm -hmm. So, Zephyr Strike, you put it on yourself, you concentrate on it. Uh, until the spell ends, you just don't provoke opportunity attacks. And then you can do the. Once during that time, you can have advantage on an attack, which also deals 1d8 extra force damage. Okay. So then I just drag that onto myself? You have an effect. You just have a thing that says single, or, um, heck in, where is it? Uh, boop, boop. I'm, I'm in there, so I'll throw it on you in a sec. Boom. Oh. And whenever you okay. want to use the other, uh, when you want to use the damage part, then let me know. Okay. One, four... My main action, since Clifton didn't move in to attack, she will not reach. Do you want to use <laughs> your, your Skyborne ability? Uh, Which is your transformation ability? Is that what that is? Yep. <laughs> that gives um, you a fly speed equal to your movement speed. It makes it so all your attacks, so you got it on, deal uh, four more points of lightning damage. And if you have temporary hit points, it lets you do stuff with them. Uh, Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Lightning energy begins to build around you. Uh, your feet lift off the ground. Your hair begins to flow around you. Your weapon is coated in lightning. All right. He next Th me. That'll be your action and your bonus action. Oh. Ignatius, Callus, you're on deck. I will... Um... Yeah, I'll probably get whacked before the next one. I'm going to... Enter a rage as a bonus action. Uh huh. Uh, actually, I guess I'll start with Lord of Brass. And then the I will rage and use my movement to start flying towards him and three point land in front of him. 
The brass elements of your body begin to glow and burn a bright white color. Flames erupt from your back and forming from them wings appear. Between the two of those, show me where you'd like to move. Uh, so I'll start with the Insignia Pounce. I'll fly to there. And then I'll move the rest of my movement, which would be, so it's 20. Oh, I can, I can literally get to him. <laughs> oh, I, will, I will three point land in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> you rush off towards him. As you do, he raises his weapon in preparation to strike back at you. Is that your turn? Uh, that's all I can do. Callus. I will, as an action, activate my Echoes of Dread. My own transformation. By the way, everything in here is in dim light. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, like <laughs> Shadows begin to dance around you. Your eyes become a, a pitch black hue. Uh, and, uh, and as a bonus action... I will activate my heckin' Steps of Night. Alrighty. Cleric thingy. Which Gives allows you to fly. Shadow, yeah, shadow wings. <laughs> Hell at this play once more. <laughs> yeah. Wait until we're all done transforming. <laughs> yeah. That's what you want to do. Uh-oh. Are you going to take any movement? Um... I will get to, like, here. Alrighty. Are you going to fly up at all? Um, sure. How far? I will go up about 50, 20 feet. Okay. 50, 20 feet. Yep. Lorelei. <laughs> That's me. That's you. <laughs> I have a, okay. I have a question. Mm. I want to transform. I really do. But um, <laughs> what was I thinking? Words. Um, is it okay if I? Cause I'm going to summon my primordial agent. That takes my action, but so does transforming. Sure does. And I. D uh, and it says um, semantic component. Not semantic. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> verbal components to to spells can't be done. Is it a verbal component to even? <laughs> Why am I asking these questions? I don't know. You have a thing okay, written right in front fine. of you. Fine. Uh. I'm a transform. This is fine. I don't need to <laughs> say anything to summon him. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna scream the pandemonium. Just whispers and winds start wrapping around me. <laughs> As I start <laughs> like a fucking Beyblade. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. We'll throw that on you. Click. A ten foot radius sphere appears around you of the screaming winds of pandemonium conjured up. You will now have half cover against attacks coming from outside. Anything that starts its turn within the sphere will take thunder damage. Um, things within it cannot perform verbal components and gravity centered on you uh, pulls to the nearest surface allowing you to jump uh, twice as far as well as walk uh, as well as walk on uh, vertical and horizontal surfaces. Cool. Vertical and I'm vertical a, surfaces. Right? I'm gonna go over here and go five feet up the wall. I'm going There's to no continue wall there. this moment. This is a pit. Oh, these are, these are, hole. yeah. <laughs> well, I go over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. His turn. As you rush towards him, uh, Ignatius, he brings up his greatsword. He's going to make two attacks against you. He misses. Yeah. As you duck out of the way. Make your three-point landing. He brings it up again. He brings it down on you. That also misses. That's him. Clifton. Wow. Ta -ta -ta. Let us go hiya, hiya, hiya. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Because of my uh, because of my heart of ice, I have an extra fifteen feet of movement. Uh huh. Uh, so I will also go uh, hiya, and then all the way nya, just here because I, I can't get any further. Um, 
and I will immediately, uh, because I can't get any further, I'm just going to throw off a uh, an ice knife at the boy. All right, go ahead. I might actually, I'm actually get like here. Uh, that way, I'm beside of Callus uh, if I need to be. Gotcha. Or, you know, beside of him, but you know what I mean. Da -da -da -da. And I will throw an ice knife. Hiya. Dang. That misses. That does miss. You try to use it, it melts before it touches him. To do. Uh, and with my bonus action, I don't think I have. Da -da -da -da. Uh, if, yeah, if I do the if I do the dance, I'm gonna hurt Lorelai. So yeah, no, I'm I'm good. That is that is that is me for the for the round. Alrighty, Constance. Okay, um, looking at cunning action, it says that I can use my bonus turn, my bonus action. Uh, can all this action can use blah, 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 blah. this action can be used only to take the dash, disengage, or hide action. Yeah. And dashing, remind me what dashing is again? Gives you, yeah, your, gives you your speed again. You double your movement. Double my movement. Okay. I'm gonna go... <laughs> you could for yeah. you could just get to him if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bolt of lightning, you blast forward, you appear almost like a lightning bolt, zapping into place beside of him. And we're going to use our regular action to do a bia. Do it. Bia him. Bia. That is a hit. And you could do sneak attack if you wanted to. And you would have advantage. <laughs> yes, you do have advantage because he's a... Do you want to roll it again see if you crit? Yeah, sure. Okay. If it helps, I think this is the only time it's going to happen in this You fight. crit! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh my god, does that mean I also get nervous all? Yes, you do! But he has to do that he's gotta eat so shit on the cod save, gonna, and they've been doing so well. We're, he, I, I'm gonna be real with you, he literally has to nat one to fail with your DC, because it's con and he's a giant. But let's do your damage first. How much of your sneak attack damage do you want to do? Um, it will be doubled with the crit, whatever you put into it, just so you know. If there's uh, ever a time. Let's... Let's do create opening and fucking hope it lands. Okay, so we're going to do damage right. first, so apply the 3d6 and then roll your damage against him. 3d6. And then roll the damage. You deal 40 points of damage to him. All right, then go ahead and roll create opening against him. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> you got it. Please. Just once. The dolphins come to your aid. He is. He has really good con. He is a giant. And now, Dude. roll nervous all. Please, just once. I just want one. Okay, no. Ah. No. Man. <laughs> yeah. He would have. He would have had to not one. That's okay. But I think that's me. All right. You do 40 points of damage. Ignatius. All right. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't hit me, so I think my rage ends. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Are you gonna rage? Uh, I can't. That is my last rage. Oh no! But I will reckless attack! <laughs> oh wait, wrong axe. Uh, but you did hit regardless. As you strike, the weapon deals extra damage. Uh, you do a total of 17 points. Nice. Um... Oh, I didn't even realize I could have used its ability. Well, I'll do that in the second swing. Oh, you could do it now. Uh, that's fair. It takes an additional 2d6 damage. No, it did that. That, that oh, did that it. automatically? Yeah. Oh, the other thing, it, it does the, pro, the save, prone thing. Yeah. yeah. Alright, that'd be at the bottom. Bleh. Gotta go all the way down. He nat once! I'm so sorry. Where was that a minute ago for Anna? <laughs> you knocked him prone. Come on. Nice. The weapon lets out a great roar, as if it's a giant roaring back in response to him. The giant is knocked prone by the axe. Axe eye, I think I'll take it. <laughs> That's a hit. 
You swing. You deal another 20, 22 points of damage. The fire uh, being... Him being immune to your fire. Yeah. Uh, that is Ignatius. All right, Callus. Lorelai, you're on deck. I need to reapply you on deck. Second things to myself, but they're not. There it is. Okay, is it supposed to be grant a disattack or grand disattack? Because it uh, doesn't have a T in there for grant. No, it should be grant. I'll, I'll change it. My good old what, grand why did you, disattack. Did you put that oh, back, sorry. Please? I was... I, uh, sorry about that. We're, you're literally never going to use it again for this character. Just reapply yeah, it to the effect. Oh, that can... There. There you go! Alrighty. Alright. What are you I think do? you put it on Clifton as well. Did I? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, was I... I'm not still targeting. <laughs> okay, I took it off of him. Don't Excuse worry about you. it. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Heckin... Get him, Callus, believe in yourself! This is the time! This is the time to believe! <laughs> gotta believe! Just gotta believe! Believe! Uh, this is your character, on Clifton! On Clifton, Callus! I am going to... Uh, I'm gonna go big. Um, I'm gonna cast... my confidence facade that knew that I had to believe in myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast a Guardian of Faith near him. <gasps> right next to uh, to Ignati Ignatius there. Alrighty. So Somebody. I think it's if he... Is he yeah. It's whenever they move within 10 feet of it. Oh, I see. Um, well, that... Hmm. If y'all are going to keep it pinned down, then... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He is like a, a gargantuan creature, so he could walk over you. Um, I'll have it put like in between uh, Clifton and I and Constance and Ignatius then. Ignatius, rather. There, yeah. And uh, that will be uh, him, I think. All right. Blur that one also physically occupies the space. If I remember All right. right. Oh, does it? Um... Heck. So this is fine. <laughs> you can go around the, the pillars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So my jumps are longer. What are my jumps currently? I don't know. <laughs> is it is it um your walking I Logan. What do you intend to use them for? I would like to move and then jump over this huge guy uh, to get on define... the other side of him. I mean, you can just you can go around. Oh, true. Well, I wanted to jump. This is fun. You can still contextually <laughs> jump. You don't have to worry about the mechanics. Contextually jump. Uh, so are you also dashing? I don't think that's a good idea. I'll, I'll get... I can move 30 That's feet. also too far. I'll... Yeah, 30 feet. So here. And then I'm going to use my action <laughs> to call forth Jean-Paul! What a shock! <laughs> the boy! Jean-Paul, it's time for your rematch! Is he... Is he's he huge? huge. Alright. He's huge. On the other side of... Uh... Heckin... Big, big over here. We're gonna give him the right hit points. Give me one moment. I don't know why it keeps doing this. I don't know. Well, I don't. I wouldn't expect you to know. Oh well, that's true. As you go to the other side of him and go there, just rising up from down below, he just appears like a boss monster, getting ready to attack what's on the platform. <laughs> Let's do this. Is that your turn, Lorelai. Yeah. All right. You did it. You fully set up. His turn. He's going to attack, and he's going to make two attacks, one against Constance, one against Lorelei. Uh, he is, however, starting his turn within range of a few people. Um, so, real quick, um, Ignatius, uh, we probably don't have to do yours, because he would just, he'd be immune to the fire damage anyways. Uh, Lorelei, he's starting his turn within ten feet of you. Does your thing at, work at the end of your turn, or the start of your turn? One sec. 
be a good thing to know. <laughs> yeah. Um... I think it's uh, anyone who starts their turn. Yep, so he's going to take the fourth under damage. I'm just going to apply that to him outright. Kaboom. Oh, yeah. Take that sweet damn bloat. He's then going to make an attack against Lorelei and against Constance. Ah! Grace was going to come this? down on Constance first. He attacks. He is, I made it from when he was prone. I'm just going to own that. Uh, it misses. Constance, you get away from the attack as it strikes. Uh, from being prone, he stands. He then makes an attack uh -oh. against, yeah, uh -oh. against Lorelai. <laughs> and that hits. No! Oh no! Lorelai, you take. I'm in my two hit points. You take 32 <laughs> points of damage as the sword strikes you. I die. <laughs> he is not going to try to move. Refuse. <laughs> better not. And Clifton. I am going to make my way over here, and then here, and then I'm going to Misty Step. Alrighty. It's your bonus and action. And get myself over Nya, and then I will do 15 more feet behind the boy. Boop, 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 oh boop. my gosh. Because Speedy now boy. I'm safe. <laughs> He's invisible. I'm also invisible. <laughs> You're just hidden behind the pillar so we can't see you. No, there he disappeared go. on my end, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> but now that I'm away from everyone, I can activate my Dance of the White Moon! <gasps> with my bonus can. action, I can make a bright moonlight that's centered on me and out with a 15-foot radius square. Or sphere, not square. <laughs> um, the area is full of bright moonlight, and, ex uh, and it, uh, is, it rains for one minute. Yep. And any creature that starts its turn within it makes a con save, and they take damage. Yep. Uh, I know he's going to make the con save, but he still takes half when he does. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> that's good. So, hold on, though. Because Misty Step would have been a bonus action. And then that's a bonus action. Oh, you are you are correct. God dang it. I can't do that. Mm. I, thought I, I, thought it was, I thought I could action it. Nah, that's my bad. Well, you'll, uh, you'll get it next turn. I'm trying to see how... Where was I at? I was beside Callus. Trying to think if there's a way yeah. that I can get there without, not there obviously, but uh, away from people so they don't die. I can't. All right, I'm just gonna attack him. Okay. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. First attack. Hi ya. You strike. Ooh. That is a miss. Hmm. Second attack. Come on, you got this. You gotta believe. That's a hit. Hey ya. You strike, he takes 12 points of damage. And that is me this turn. All right. Constance, you do not have advantage on this one, just so you know. That is okay. Um, You unfortunately have to make a dexterity saving throw. They're 15 feet up. All right, you're good. <laughs> Yay. Thank goodness. They flew I'm there. Going, I'm going to do the bjaw. Do the bjaw. Bjaw. So stay on ground. <laughs> That misses. Oh no. We have another one. We have another Bjorn. And that one hits. You can put sneak attack on it if you'd like. Okay, let's... I do... Yeah, let, 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 let... I want... Create opening! To work! <laughs> he has the nat one on con saves. No, 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 no. He had a nat one on the work. other thing. He does. He, he on can, the other thing? That Because the DC for the other one was 11. Oh! The okay. DC for this one's 15. Okay. Okay. Well, like a 15, 20% chance. I believe in what? you. Believe in what? Believe in yourself. You All right. have to believe! Roll your damage. Believe! Yeah. Believe. <laughs> oh! Just... How is that it? <laughs> Takes 25 points of damage. Now roll the con save. You got this. I'm not okay. This is the callous chance. It gets a 29! No! no! I'm sorry, my Jesus, relief wasn't enough. That's okay. No. Oh. What's important is that it was there. Is that you, Constance? Is um, He's about to do something around this general area, isn't he? Hmm. Hmm. Oh. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, cause I just know that Clinton freaking yeeted himself over here. 
Oh, I yeeted myself over there because I was about to do something. <laughs> oh, okay. I, okay. I have an area of effect thing that could really hurt you guys if you're around me. <laughs> okay, so it was because of you that you moved. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. All right, okay, I'm staying put then. That was me. All righty. Ignatius. We'll continue doing the barbarian thing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Only reckless all the time. Hello. That oh, hits. Seven. Roll damage and then roll the cut the save to see if he falls down. You strike. You deal. Twenty six reduced to twenty two points of damage. <sighs> and he's knocked prone. <laughs> Again, yeah. Nice eye. Nice eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's a miss. Beans. <gasps> Alrighty. Anything else, Ignatius? Uh... Nope. Callus. <gasps> oh. I can... Uh, all range stuff would have disadvantage. So I'm a heckin' just teleport over to him. As a... Actually... If I can... If I, that would take a bonus action, so I might as well not do that. Um... That's I'll get there. When are you going to waste it? Well, it's because I have other bonus action things I can do oh, is the main I problem. See. Or you can teleport away from him. Ah. What a bonus action well, as well, I, so. No, I'm just saying there's more uses for the bonus Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, Well, not this time, because I'm casting Shadow Blade. <gasps> Alrighty. Hey. And you'll have advantage, because A, he's prone, and B, dark. Yeah! Heck you create in. a saber made of darkness. Little glowing, like specks of white with stars in them and stuff. And he's going heckin' a saber made of the night sky. Oh, yeah, get him. Heckin' yeah. That hits. And I'm gonna put my divine strike into it. <sighs> if I can find it. I don't know if I have a thing. I don't know if it's I actually put that in sheet. Stuff. Uh, in that case, so what is Divine Strike? It just adds... One D8 damage. of, I believe, Radiant Damage. Uh, so Radiant doesn't do anything extra against him, so just roll a D8, put it in your modifier window, and roll your damage. Okay, cool. Or, hold on. Or I could just go. There you go. Oh, whoa. Just roll your damage. Okay, do Bow. You strike. He takes 15 more points of damage. Okie oh, dokie. eight on that extra one. Yeah. And that is uh, all his stuff he can do. Alrighty. So that's his turn. Cool. Lorelei. All right. Could you deal the thunder um, damage to him? Yeah. Actually, you know what? I can just four. put him down by four. It's fine. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Get ready to put him down by more. One, two, three, more. Here comes John Paul! <laughs> <laughs> Two slam attacks, you know the deal. Bia! That's a hit! Yeah! Bia! He takes 12 points of lightning damage. Again! Bia! He takes. Go ahead and roll your damage. He takes. Yeah! 21 points of lightning damage. You guys are laying into him. A uh, Gungarok looks beat up. He looks tired. It's groaning. You see the flames begin to flicker. Good job, John Paul! As I'm fucking getting whipped around by my own wind. Is that you? <laughs> yeah. As this happens, it looks up to John Paul. <laughs> Past. Right, it reaches up, it stands. It is going to make a great sword attack against Jean Paul. Can Jean Paul with two wispy fingers make the bring it on motion? It hits. Oh, Jean Paul! It strikes. Jean Paul takes 39 oh. points of damage as the great sword Go cleaves around. through it. It spins around, it strikes at it again. Jean Paul! It hits. No! It Jean strikes no! Jean Paul, whose body hangs in the air for a moment as it as the great sword strikes straight through it. It begins to fall back slowly, as it does. 
You see two of its fingers go together, go to where its humanoid head would be, and it gives a two-fingered salute very quickly as the lightning constituting its body erupts outward. Lorelei, um, it's, do it's doing its death throws. Do you want to... Oh, shit, I I'm didn't realize I'm sorry, it you're within those. range, Callus. Oh, that's fine. Could you please target oh. Gungarok oh. and Callus <laughs> with its vortex? Uh, I guess oh, I can roll it. I can roll it. I'll roll them. Oh, okay. Callus, I'm sorry. <laughs> you beautiful, beautiful boy. Go for it. Survive. Believe. Believe. You both oh, fail. Callus. Callus. We really gotta work on that believing thing, Callus. <laughs> you oh, both take 30 points of damage. Uh, for Shadow Blade? For Shadow Blade. Roll me yeah. a constitution save. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Constitution save, I'm gonna fail. Yep. <laughs> Shadow Blade disappears as the eruption of lightning energy causes it to vanish. Gungarok stumbles back as Jean Paul is destroyed. It lets out a, a large grunt as it just barely stops itself from falling off the edge. <laughs> No one look at me, I'm not crying! We'll Clifton. get him back! John Paul! No! John Paul! I will activate now the Dance of the White Moon! Alrighty. Do -do -do. As you do, the area around you begins to freeze somewhat. You see it slipping back a bit more as it's trying to keep its feet gripped on the ground to prevent falling. But it's having difficulty. And now the attacks come in! Hiya! Clifton strikes! Clifton grants! Oh! oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Clifton! Okay. How do you oh. want to do this, Clifton? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Clifton. Yeah. How do you want to do this? With Jean Paul <laughs> pushing him, he will activate the dance and make this guy slide off. He slides into the pillar and just starts climbing up him. And just as Ignatius said, he's going to rise up the frost brand and slam it directly into the eye holding the jewel. As you strike <laughs> it into the eye, it lets out a monstrous as it begins to crack. And as it does, it shatters. A wave of elemental flaming energy erupts out. You're pushed back. You land, making your own Don't three points. Making your own three-point landing on the bridge behind it. As Gungarok falls, its great sword flies into the distance, collides with the wall, sticks in place in one of the rocky walls that are nearby. Oh! As its body falls. And it disappears. It vanishes into the mist and darkness below. The red flame of its body flickering and descending into whatever depths this cavern goes down into, until eventually it either disappears or the flames go out. You hear a distant <laughs> as behind the lot of you, elemental energy, residual elemental energy from the attack causes a multicolored explosion to erupt from the various places you are. I think I just saw you do that like five times in a row. <sighs> Yeah, it felt like it. Ah. Good job, Clifton. <sighs> I saw my babe leading. Land. Kind of. Callus walks over and puts a hand on your shoulder. Callus lights on fire. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I turn, turn my, my lot of brass off. You guys see the various different planar and elemental energies from your different transformations being pulled somewhat into the air, as is common for when this happens. You see the, the Terminus Hadron in the center of the area seems to absorb them. They coalesce, and the remaining ambient bits of flame and lightning seem to all drift towards it and begin getting pulled into the large tube-like uh, device that regulates the planar membrane in this area.
crystals. Well done. You have protected the Hadron once again and prevented Hygax from escaping his prison in the negative energy plane. Until next week. Indeed. The battle never ends, Constance. But that's why we fight it together. <laughs> One big happy family. <laughs> hmm. Small as well. This is where if this was an Urobuchi production, I would stab somebody and turn out to be the true villain of this. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that happen before. <laughs> uh, it's as the as the dust settles, the hole that has been bored in the ceiling remains. Now, as there had never been a physical way to enter into the Terminus Hadron or the Crystal Sanctuary, there is now a large hole that remains in the center of town. The battle against Hygax and Krita becomes more difficult, more dangerous, as a direct uh, method of approach has been formed. What will come of this? Only time will tell. Who's to say what devilish plot Krita and Hygax will employ next to try to have Hygax escape his prison in the negative energy plane, if no one caught that? <laughs> <laughs> but it matters not. Because as long as the Crystal Hunters are here, Hygax will never be freed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some wood to chop. <laughs> I'm going to go watch. And so the status quo is restored. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh... With there being no real dramatic, poignant place to really end this, that's where we're going to end for today. Yay! Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh that the was so fun. And we tieflinged. We oh, this was, an, this was an amazing way to play characters available at Drive Through RPG. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined Ignatius just I walking out, just pulls out the axe, constantly just pulls out an apple and just bites into it and follows him. This is my fourth apple. <laughs> How are you not are you, sick? Are you I don't not know. getting tired of apples by this point? No. <laughs> <laughs> I it? bought uh, six apples today. <laughs> God. I got to do everything except for the dancing snowflakes, but everything else was, ah, it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. I love yeah. it when we get to be stupid. And this is... <laughs> A thousand percent canon to Somnus Domina. This happened. What? These yeah. are things that exist. <laughs> elsewhere. I really hope that one day we happen upon a wall that tells of Jean Paul. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, what, 20 years, you said, before? Yep, 20 years before the events of the other campaign. Yeah. Actually, this is roughly around when uh, Avi would have went back in time to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah! As credits close on this episode, <gasps> as everybody resumes their day-to-day -day life, as a large sort of barrier is built around the hole that was created a, to make it look more ornamental and to prevent people from falling into it. Previously unseen within the Terminus Hadron, within the Crystal Sanctuary, a figure wearing dark robes, gold ornaments, with red hair poking out from a hood and a single pinkish glowing eye, stands upon the teleportation circle within the Crystal Sanctuary, finally having made their way to the place that the Crystal Hunters so valiantly attempt to protect. And as a soft, sinister smile crosses their lips, Cut to black. Oh no! How many times we gotta teach you this lesson, Arkale? <laughs> well, that's not gonna stand. Come back so, next same time, time next week? Deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Arkale. 
that apples are boy. Apples are clearly the most superior fruit. I dare anyone to come to me and tell me that there is anything better than the crisp crunch, the sweetness <laughs> of an apple. <laughs> Maybe we can make a pie, right? No, Chad, it's not a scandal. <laughs> it's the character that we established in this. <laughs> can... Here's how they are amazing. You can eat them as is, just ripe off the tree. You can cut them and bake them into a pie. You can squeeze them into a juice. You can let that juice sit for a bit and have cider. And then you can have that juice that turned into a cider sit even longer to become vinegar, to which you can put it on your salad. Perfect fruit. It's great. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty great. What a strange place to assume scandal would be. Wow. <laughs> I just love Arcane there. Just like, sure, Logan, we fall him for that. Yeah, before. man. Everybody, everywhere, ever is scandal. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Oh. Tomorrow is apparently the second year anniversary. Oh, cool. <gasps> oh. oh. Yeah. Probably oh. possessed by Velis at this point. No. Raleigh's barely. Fucking, not even remotely. Hair. This is 20 years ago. Raleigh was possessed oh, yeah. two years ago. Raleigh, uh, like, Raleigh was possessed like a year ago-ish. Like a, a, a bit under two years ago and only stopped being possessed as of like the last few months. Mm. Alrighty. Well, with that, I think we're going to end the recording and then we're going to do the raffle. Mm. Oh, man. Alrighty, my guys. Wadi Toast, you love every. Oh, 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 oh. Goodbye, everybody. We'll be back Bye. next week with more. Bye. We'll be back next I week. I won't with be. More I won't be back. That's true. You oh, won't be. <laughs> Bye. 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 Wadi Toast.